solo. playthroughs we have a good one today with realm of the dead and goldix in mage knights scenario one of the scenarios from the Re shades of tesla i wanted to say return of tesla which doesn't make any sense at all but that's fine and uh yeah excited last time i featured this i did have a couple of rules wrong i will mention as as we go i am working on this camera as opposed to this camera because i don't know goblins apparently decided to show up today after the weekend and decided to say nope that doesn't work today so uh it is what it is one day i'll figure out why it doesn't work and uh on certain days and <laughs> that day again as i say often is not today so we're just gonna go and make this work but if i'm over if i'm looking over here it's just because you know it is what it is. I'm bad at this. Uh, Warlord Drake, what's up, Dursu? Yo, my friend, today I'm free and I will be enjoying your struggles and misadventures as always. Probably, excuse me, probably one of my top five scenarios of Maze Knight. I like this one way more than Hidden Valley just because of second victory condition, which is sealing the graveyards with mana. Sagitt with the core team around. He has no chance to win. Mike James, Sagitt is always here for Maze Knight. Hopefully he isn't the reason for the bad luck. And Mahdi, Mahaba Mahdi, I wouldn't make it. Oh, bye, Mahdi. <laughs> I was just checking to see if he decided to stream earlier. Uh, good luck crushing the Necro Party. Jester is there too. Hello there, chat. I hope all is well. Mike James, IAV is all good. Thomas Willinger, all the best. Hello, Thomas. Thomas is the designer of Volcare's Banishment. That is a scenario I hope to get on the channel at some point this year uh maybe sort of i don't know it's going to be super long and it requires three mages so it will not be the easiest thing to do uh warlord drake uh, for also for those who don't know is the designer of return of apocalypse so many good fan made scenarios out there for sure Vinny says hi and warlord drake is struggling right from the beginning yup <laughs> That's how it goes. Although the chance of a Manticore sighting is rather low in the Realm of the Dead. One of the things I was doing wrong when I put this on the channel, and that was back when I used to record these things and edit them. Believe that. Uh, <laughs> back in the Dark Ages, there, uh, when you place a marauding enemy, so a rampaging enemy, so a Draconum or an Orc that appears on a tile, you are supposed to take them from the Dark Crusader faction. I thought that was only for life and death. I did not realize it was also for Hidden Valley and Realm of the Dead. For those who don't know, Hidden Valley is the kind of the corresponding scenario, but that has to do with the Elementalist faction. Today, we are focusing more on the Dark Crusader faction. And like Warsu, I do really like these scenarios. They're blitz rules. They're four rounds. As much as Dursu likes the uh, ceiling mechanic, I think that's silly. <laughs> It is what it is. Like, liberate the graveyards with, like, the fact that you're making me spend the mana, just the, whatever. I think that's silly. But, you know, it is what it is. It's one more thing for me to forget. And that's, oh, I forgot to pay a mana. And then have to go back and refigure it. But uh, because we are playing with, the like, the Blitz-like rules, because there are only four rounds, we will have an extra die in the source. We'll have an extra unit in the offer. And, again, we're playing with the Dark Crusader faction. So we have our red faction leader. And we will have everything else on top. I think the recommended level for this is a four? Five? I don't know. Um, I'm going to be playing at a seven. The last time I played it, I was on a six. And uh, I think that went pretty well, if I remember correctly, with Tovac. So we're just going to bump that up to a seven. This is a pretty dry run for me. I have not done this scenario in quite some time. So excited to get it on camera and see what happens. All right, so let me get the source ready. Booyah, we got a gold, two blacks, that's not black, red, two reds, and a and a blue. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day! And then we're gonna get our uh, dummy player. I do have Arethia's Deed deck over here. We'll just add, you know, again, it could be four cards of the four colors, it doesn't matter. But let's figure out uh, who we want to have join us today. So we have Arethia, Bravelar, Krang, Norwas, Tovac, and Wolfhawk. I rolled a four, so number four is going to be Norwas. Hello, the elf. Everyone's favorite elf. 
it's thematic because he would be more naturally inclined to be with the elementalist and you know those crusaders they gots to go uh we'll take that out because we will need that and we have our skills and we have the turn track great so i'm shuffling up norawas's 10 skills no need to proxy anything today. The discoloration for Norwas and Goldix is not that bad from the base game with the Lost Legion expansion, so that's nice. We're going to shuffle up Goldix's skills. Hopefully I shuffle Flight right on top because uh, that could be super handy. We'll do that. We're going to shuffle up the 12 faction tokens for the Elementalist, or first of the Dark Crusader faction. There are six type of types of tokens. I have my little cheat sheet. We'll talk about those as we get them. You cannot use the same type of token tw uh, more than once in a turn, and there are two of each. Alternatively, if you, and again, you get one every time you defeat a, a enemy from the Dark Crusader faction, uh, and you can alternatively use them during interaction to get plus one fame or plus three reputation or plus three uh, influence. So they can be very, very strong to use them in that sense. I do want to get Norwas's little card and his skill sheet. We got that. I'm going to start him with two white crystals and a green. Do, do, do. And he will go there let's get the terrain deck set up again we are looking at rule uh, page 10 of the shades of tesla rule book i don't know what that is in the ultimate edition and yeah i'll spin that a little bit more uh we have it's going to be a wedge map countryside tiles we're gonna have exactly five but exactly two of them need to have magical glades so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go through these 14 tiles and find the ones with the magical glades i think there are six Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yeah, six sounds right. So we're going to shuffle these up. And we're going to take three of these. Now, when we first time we see a magical glade, we turn it into a graveyard. And that graveyard is going to be guarded by one or two dark, uh, dark crusader enemy tokens. On the second, we're going to place a one dark, one green dark crusader enemy and one brown dark crusader enemy. We need to defeat both of those enemies. When both enemies are defeated, then we need to spend a mana to seal it. And when we seal it, we get plus one reputation, I believe. Uh, so we get the reward right away. So you get the last enemy, you get a reward. You get the advanced action for the first one or the spell for the second. And then when we seal it, we uh, have to spend the mana, we get a plus one reputation, and then we get to add a shield token as well. Uh, graveyards produce, if you start your turn on a liberated graveyard, your graveyard produces one black mana at night. Uh, even though night rules always apply in a graveyard, the graveyard does not produce black mana during a day round because, I don't know. <laughs> because that makes sense because i had to have more things for me to screw up over the course of me putting this on the channel over the last couple of years and uh that's really the uh, the only reason the only reason they made that rule is for me to screw it up so i'm gonna roll this die twice why not just you know it's there one and two and then we're gonna get these five countryside tiles in a random order of sorts and we'll roll the die so two Five is not helpful. One, three tiles left. Three, four, and five, four, five, six, and one, two, three. So this will be the top of our terrain deck. On the bottom, we're going to have three core tiles. One's going to be the blue city, although it's not really the blue city. This is really the necropolis. So when that's revealed, we put the necropolis token on top. So that's an interesting tile. I think it's so much more thematically accurate for life in, in life and death when it's like the red tile and the other two dragons this one gives us an approach problem so we know that the blue city hey we got some issues coming from the south so there's a way we might want to try to maybe build the map so we can loop around and get into that monastery but we got to see and again there's going to be a little bit of variation of where this tile is going to be because we're going to have two other tiles at the bottom of the deck along with it and again it is randomly placed i do want to make sure of that yeah, definitely randomly placed. It's great. We're also going to have the green city tile. The green city tile will function as a normal city tile. We will have, again, Dark Crusader Faction tokens there. Uh, 
you know, from the darker sand of green enemies because they're not really orcs, so we can't really call them orcs. They are specific to the darker state of faction, and we will put a shield on that both for us and the dummy player. This is a friendly city, so we are not the leader of the city, which is why you bar them with the shield from the dummy player. But if we start on in the city or adjacent to it, we get plus one to our card draw. That could indeed come in handy. It's also a nice place where we might want to recruit some stronger units, especially if we have some of those faction tokens lying around that we haven't used yet. So we can get a city unit maybe in that last round to help us with our final takedown of the Necropolis. So then we're going to take these six core tiles. These are the non-city core tiles. I'm going to throw one to this other side of my table because I wanted to. I'm going to roll that die. That's a two. We're going to add that to the mix. And now we have these three tiles which will be randomly placed on the bottom of our exploration deck. I rolled a two that for that one. Four, five, six, one, two, three. And then again, these five tiles go on top. I'll bring these down hither. We shuffle up all of our decks. Let me check out the chat. World of Drake, aha, it may seem silly, but it increases the effort of doing everything well done in a way that satisfies the winning conditions. I don't know. It just, it just seems, it's like one of those like because game things that I don't really like. Like James Solicock was still the only scenario I've played. Base game only. One day I'll get into the experiences and other scenarios, maybe. Yeah, Mike, I did not play the Tesla scenarios I mean, for years, it really, it really was the channel, you know, before I ever played Dungeon Lords or Minds Lib, I was very much a purist with uh, Solo Conquest, Volcaris Return, Volcaris uh, Conquest, and that was kind of where I lived, and then, uh, you know, the channel really encouraged me to go beyond that. I have some funky stuff going on with some coloration here. Like, what is that? Okay, once I start getting the board busier, the light should come down again. The camera I use, and that is, whoa, that color is way off. That is not blue. <laughs> that is purple. Uh, weird. I'll have to play with that for next time. Something's, go, something's weird. Some, the color got a little off somehow. But yeah, that is definitely more of a purple than a blue. So I'm not really sure where that's coming off so uh blue today but uh yeah i'll try to mess with everything else looks right though so cameras fun with cameras kids i don't know one day i'll be a tech expert but yeah the camera i use does not allow me to do a light adjustment the way i would prefer so again i'm using a 4k webcam it's a brio it's fantastic for what it is for the price uh, but at some point i will probably want to upgrade this whole system with a more professional camera but again as i say <laughs> that day is not today <laughs> so uh back james the base solo conquest is just a lot of fun works for me for now at least oh yeah and it's just infinitely scalable and oh dude solo conquest is uh is great it's great i take a long break from it sometimes and then i'm like why don't i play solo conquest it's so good and I, I say it just like that. So we're going to have four units in the offer to start the game. We have our Northern Monks, our Guardian, Guardian Columns, our Illusionists, and our Magic Familiares. Also, let's remember that the Darker Seder Faction tokens will have Pursuit if they are Rampaging or Marauding. And what that means is, after I move, any... Darker state of faction on the that is placed on the board after setup will move one space toward me, but it will not enter a place if interaction is possible. Now again, magical glades you can summon a magic familiar, but technically there is no interaction possible in a magical glade, so they would indeed meant to enter a magical glade, uh, and they will also not. I guess there will be no magical glades because you have graveyards. So check that. Strike everything I just said. Uh, and the other thing they won't enter is they will not enter a fortified site, unless, of course, I just entered that fortified site, fortified site that turn for the purpose of conquest. Then they indeed would enter and become part of that battle. So we'll kind of talk about that. Now, any of the units that are placed on the board from the beginning of the game do not get the Pursuit Edition. Pursuit and Ambush are two mechanics that come with Shades of Tesla. You are welcome to add them to any of your games of of Maze Knight. I generally don't, obviously, if anyone has watched my content, but they are fun little add-ons for these two specific scenarios. And what I mean by that is Pursuit in Realm of the Dead and Ambush in the Hidden Valley. I've thought about adding both mechanics to Life and Death, but it just it's more to manage and, you know, upkeep and stuff like that. So, you know, it is what it is. So we're going to shuffle 
these 16 cards for Goldix's D deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let me get the uh, various token piles here shuffled up. So we have our Dark Crusader. I, one of the, my biggest uh, gripes, little gripes about Shades of Tesla is that I do think it's rather absurd how few enemies they preside. And when you're giving me four monster enemies, four Draconum, like the, the number of times you're going to need to reconstitute these piles, and I assure you I'm going to probably do that I normally do, with throw the tokens across the table and be like, I need to get them back because I need to reconstitute the green enemy deck. I think that's silly. I do wish, I think there should be double the number of enemies uh, provided. But again, that's just I me. Mean, I, I don't know. It just seems like an oversight. It seems like a whiz kids being a little cheap kind of thing, as opposed to just giving us the proper amount of enemies to really be able to play this full scenario. I mean, I'm, you're giving me a four round scenario that I'm going to need to reshuffle those tokens probably twice. <clears throat> something, <laughs> something feels a little bit wrong about that with me, but maybe it's just me. I'm going to take this D deck for Noramas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. My ability. To count to 16 should continue to astound you all. Because, uh, I mean, it astounds me. It really does. It's an impressive skill that I have developed over the years. We're going to put this up here. Bam! And I'll see what I want to do with this D deck. I don't know. Let me shuffle up the spell offer. Warlord Drake says, yeah, I get these issues too sometimes. The, ex the exposed may change the coloration. Yeah. Um, it's weird, though, because like everything else looks pretty true. It's just that one bag. And now it looks a little more purple. Yeah, it's funny. I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, Warlord Drake says, Wolfhawk's my strongest mage. My gold is my fave one. Let the magic happen, no doubt. Mike, Wolfhawk's your strongest mage. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe? I don't know. I've been winning with my weakest mages and losing with my strongest ones lately, so I, maybe I just have no idea what I'm talking about, which should it also which also should not be shocking news. <laughs> Mike James says, Whiskits cheaping out? Never. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get... I'm going to do a top 10 things wrong about the Ultimate Edition. Top, t top 10 things reasons why the Ultimate Edition is misnamed, because uh, nothing about that edition is Ultimate, other than all the content is there. Oh, me bananas. Anyway, Greg Soapbox. Welcome to Solo Soapbox. <laughs> I'm your host, Greg. All right, what are our spells? First spell is Whirlwind. Second spell is Chill. Third spell is Charm. And that is Tornado, Lethal, Chill, and Possess from the stronger versions of the spells, respectively. So not a amazing opening but not awful remember the enemies in the necropolis are not fortified so something like whirlwind could indeed be fairly strong possess is intriguing to me uh lethal chill can also be fairly strong as well again that will not work against enemies that have ice immunity uh, or arcane immunity for that matter but they can be uh it could be a pretty cool idea where again lethal chill is target enemy does not attack this combat and gets armor minus four for the rest of the turn fantastic or chill making an enemy lose fire resistance could also be helpful you know depending on what attack attacky cards i get attacky is now a word just go with it all right our advanced action offer is mountain lord love that card we have Swift Bolt. That range attack can be indeed nice, especially when you have Will will Focus. I mean, that's a range attack 7 for the cost of 1 green mana, which is a small price to pay with our friend Goldix here. And then we have Diplomacy Influence. Uh, and you could influence, you can use Influence as block this turn. If you have the... Um, if you play a white mana, you could actually add a an elemental... Uh, ability to that block as well, and that can be super strong against some of these Dark Crusader enemies. So, appreciate that. Last thing to shuffle over here is going to be the Artifact deck. Now, again, we're using Blitz rules. We do start with one fame every time we level up, so if we go down a level, we get an additional fame in addition to whatever fame we are earning as in the process of moving down. We're also going to start at the plus one on the reputation track, which will make recruiting a lot easier from that first round. So, again, it's been a long time since I played a four-round game, so I'm excited to uh, 
drink from that fire hydrant, so to speak. We're going to put the artifact deck over there, put a little stone on it. There, remember that that is the artifact deck. It's just, I don't know, something I've done for years. Why would I change now? And we will go ahead and put out the initial terrain. We have some kindling on the board. Now, uh, we are placing... Placing... Yes. So they are always going to be from the Dark Crusader faction. So we're going to have... This dude is a... Man, I forget all their names. <laughs> it has been that long. I need to find my little cheat sheet before Sergeant makes fun of me. I mean, he'll make fun of me anyway, but, you know, we, we'll try. We'll try. And, uh, this is a mess. Oh! Put that screen back up. All right. A little, little light filtering. A little light filtering action. Where are... Where's my cheat sheet of enemies? Here we go. Ooh, yeah. So, that is a... Gibbering ghoul? Yeah, looks like a gibbering ghoul to me. Sounds good. All right, and then we're going to have a keep enemy over here, or keep garrison. Again, there are no Dark Crusader keep faction tokens, so we're just going to put the regular token hither, face down. Make sure the, yeah, that camera's pretty centered, like that. And now since we have a monastery in the offer, we will have to add an advanced action to the unit offer. I will get a die to track that. We have one of those suckers. So I do dig that that's there. I mean, it does make the Northern Monks seem somewhat feasible. The Illusionists could also be good. Magic Familiars I also don't hate, although that could be a little mana intensive, even with Goldix, considering it's the first round. Uh, but we'll see. We're going to draw our opening hand. We have five cards coming off. Oh, my bad. We actually have a Graveyard to deal with, too. Don't forget, Greg, you're playing... <laughs> You're playing something unusual. Um, and then are these plays faced up? Nope. 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 Face down. All right. Excellent. So these are both face down. When we enter there, we will reveal them. And then we could choose as our action to combat the units that are there. I do believe they, I think they're placed faced up when you are in... Um, when I'm looking at the wrong camera. I think they're placed faced up in Life and Death, but don't quote me on that. Now, note that even though it is, even though night rules apply in a graveyard, that doesn't affect the movement cost to move in. So if we move in during the day, it will still only be three. If you move in at night, obviously it will still be the five uh, that it would be um, for night movement into a into a uh, into a, a forest, whatever that is. Great. We'll move these down and set myself up a nice little place so you can at least see the colors of the cards for the dummy player. Uh, da, da, da. Brian Scalic, hello Brian Hi Greg, joining for a short time during lunch Have you heard about the fan made campaign called The Betrayal? I have looked into it I don't know I, I just don't think it's for me I mean I could be, someone could twist my arm into trying it But like, it just seems like I just rather would play I, I feel like it's going to have a power spike problem Power spike problem I don't think it's going to be easy to scale To the difficulty I want to play yeah, I'm just I'm a little skeptical that I would I would like it. And these look Yeah, I just got once I get once I get more crowded on the board, the light should come down. So yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the betrayal as an idea. Um conceptually, I I mean I like never mind. I like it as the idea. I just don't think the execution is gonna be good for my enjoyment of this game. I think I would just rather play the scenarios as they are, as opposed to all those little tweaks that are in the betrayal. But you know, Sagitt, you got lucky I cannot join live due to some late work. Sorry, dude. Have a good one. We'll catch you later. I'm sure you'll have a lot to say in the comments <laughs> after the fact. Uh, Warla Drake says, I thought it was a racket. I thought, what was a racket? I don't know what a racket is. Uh, Sagitt says that this is already a restart or our hero was in super talkative mode. There's a lot of setup in the shades of Tesla Sagitt. I'll have you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I blabber too much. It is what it is. It's a problem. Jonathan, somebody's got to convince Awaken Realms or Eagle Griffin to make a deluxe version of Mage Knight. We could just put all the same stuff in a in a way too big box. Yeah, dude. Or Awaken Realms, man. Someone call Awaken Realms. <laughs> Let's make this thing happen, dude. Mike James, I have to grab your merk just because. <laughs> your merk? Your, I think you. I know he's a fan made uh, mage. 
Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. So maybe someone can convince me to do, put that on the channel as well. Patron challenges, people. That's what patron challenges are for. I, uh, I'm not even joking. So, shoot. I... I want to kill the Jim Ringle. I want to liberate that graveyard. Well, I need to liberate that graveyard. That is a win condition. So there are two things we need to do to win. We need to liberate both graveyards, including sealing them, because that's a thing. And uh, we also are going to need to um, defeat the Necromancer. The Necromancer lives in the Necropolis. And uh, that's just what happens. Great. Let me draw my opening hand. We have... Promise, Rage, Crystal Joy, Mana Draw, and we'll focus. I would like a Swiftness. That's too faint. That would give me a level up in Swift Bolt, man. So I could, I could try to hold on to some things. I blocked the four. No. All right. Remembering a couple of things. Um, Gibbering Ghoul has Vampiric. Vampiric is an ability that is unique to the Tesla enemies. Remember, a lot of the Tesla enemies give you less fame than they normally would because they're kind of making up for that by giving you these faction-specific tokens. But it just means that it gets a little bit harder to level up. It's more of an issue in Life and Death where you're not getting the plus one bonus every time you hit a level. Gibbering Ghoul is attacking with a four. For every wound I take, the Gibbering Ghoul's defense goes up by one because he's basically sucking our life forces away from us to make him all that much stronger. Now, I have no movement. <laughs> it's, it's a great start. It's a great start, people. What I would like to do is kill the Jibbering Ghoul, get Swift Bolt, have Will Focus, and the Swift Bolt, be able to do a range attack 7 on these two idiots over here. I think that would be super helpful. The question is, can I get the move 5 to get in there, kill the Jibbering Ghoul? It's move 8 to get over there. Uh, do I want early bird or planning? I assume the defeated enemy normal rules. I'm assuming that whatever the dummy player takes for their their action will just come out at the game. That seems accurate, but I I really need to get some movement. I need some movement, movement. I need some movement, movement. All right, we're going to uh, stop singing and uh, get great start. Draw two cards. We get Improvisation and Determination. That's a good draw. We're going to roll for the dummy player's tactic. He rolls a fork, so he took planning because he's a jerky jerk. Thanks, Norawas. I thought we were friends, but apparently not. So Norawas is first. And let's make this habit. So he's going to go. We have a blue card. We have a green card. And we have a white card. So naturally, Norawas goes through five cards at the very beginning of this game. Has 11 cards left to go. Pulls off two reds. My turn. We're going to play the red with improvisation. I'm going to discard Crystal Joy. Let's me move five. Gets here. No, I'll, I'll hold on to Crystal Joy. I'll play... I'm probably not recruiting. I need to get over to that Magical Glade. So I'll just discard Promise. So that's move five. And I could kill that dude easily next turn with Mana Draw and do some cool stuff. Get my level up, get my car, whatever. I end my turn on a blue mine, so I get a blue crystal. I'm going to roll this die. It's gold. So, so many gold. And now we're going to... Remember, night rules apply in the graveyard, so I cannot use gold mana there, even though it is a day run. So I probably want to get rid of those now. Norwas's turn. It is a green. It is a white. It is a green. One more card comes off. He went through eight cards. He has eight left. Why does this look so small? Seven left? No, four. He went through nine cards. He has seven left. Yeah, math is hard, as I told you earlier and every day. All right, I'm going to attack this dingbat. We're going to spend the blue crystal that I got to do uh, block five, so Vampiric is not triggered. I don't take any wounds. Then we're going to use this red crystal, and uh, there's red mana from the source, this to die from the source to power rage. That's enough to kill this dude. That's going to give me two fame. I leveled up, so I get another fame. It gets me one reputation. It gets me a faction token. The faction token is... One of the good ones. It is the 
Amulet of Re Reawakening. Uh, play on your turn, pick a card at random from your discard pile, put it on the bottom of your deed deck. At the end of your turn, draw as if your hand limit was one higher. We'll put that over here as an earned uh, thing. I need to get through these cards a little bit more aggressively, I think. Yeah, I need to get move six to get it to there. Actually, let me use the gold instead of the red. I could also hold on to this blue crystal and use mana draw. Yeah, that probably makes some sense. I have Crystal Joy. It is what it is. All right, so I'm going to actually use both those golds because I'm going to want different colors for when I'm in the graveyard. So I use Mana Draw. I use two dice from the source. I blocked. I killed. And now we're going to do a level up as well. So I'm going to end up my turn. Clean up. I'm re-rolling both those dice. It's a black and a red. These cards go away. I'm going to look at my top two skills. They are... Give me some flight. Nope. Definitely not. We get a blue crystal and a green mana. Or I can get plus one influence for each color or crystal that I have in my inventory. We will take the blue crystal and the green mana. That is called the green crystal craft. We're going to add one of Noromasa skills to the, uh, the available skills for the next time I level up. I can get plus one move for each health, uh, unwounded and... Uh, ready units that I have up to three movement and then I'm going to grab the swift bolt for sure this comes down this moves over fantastic I'm going to draw up to five cards and we got a swiftness that's a nice oh that's a ton of range attack that's pretty bananas but you know what it's not a ton of it's not a ton of movement <laughs> I end up my turn on the blue the blue mine, so I get another blue crystal. And somehow I have to get move six to get into that stupid graveyard. Woof. Move six. I would like move six, please. I mean, I have literally four movement cards in my deck. I have two stamina, two marches. I haven't seen any of them. All right, Norwas, one, two, three. It's red. No more cards coming off the deck. Let me see what's going on. Sadness has looked like looks like the scouts did not show up either. <laughs> All right, I'm playing Tranquility. Draw a card. Give me a march. Hey, look at that, kids. I'm going to play Crystal Joy. I'm going to power it with this blue. I'm going to make that a green i'm gonna power march for move four play swiftness for move two more and get myself into the graveyard while i'm there do i re do i reveal it or do i have to choose that to attack it as the action of my turn but not only effects the graveyard you may enter it i guess they don't reveal until i choose to attack it never as a second Face down. Night rules apply. Yeah, I guess they don't reveal until I choose to attack it. I don't know. I'll play it that way. Who cares? All right, move six. We're good. I'm going to roll this. I could discard another card to get Crystal Joy back in my hand. No, thank you. That's now a red. Oh, man. I don't have a green. Oh, I have a green from that. Never mind. <laughs> wolf that got scary i was scared i was a little scared for a second there not gonna lie draw to my hand limit which is five booyah there's all my movement who's shocked not me all right uh that should be enough i think we'll be good norboss one two three it's white wow norboss is blowing through his deck he's declaring end around this turn i'm going to enter the graveyard we have oh Zombies and zombies. Uh, that will work all right, I guess. Can I get range attack 10? No, because I remember I had to use swiftness to get the move 6, so that's a little unfortunate. So I'm going to play Will Focus. I'm going to power it with... Well, I'm going to use my skill. My Magic Craft skill gives me a blue crystal, so I have maxed out my blue crystals. And I'm going to use this 
uh, green mana. That's range attack seven. That kills one of the zombies. I'm going to then play March for a move two when you're using taking advantage of cumbersome. The zombies have cumbersome, so they have three attacks of a one each. But when you're you can combine attacks for the sake of reducing them with cumbersome. You cannot avoid combine attacks for the sake of block normally, so this is a little unique. But I'm going to use two movement points to block two of those attacks or reduce them to zero effectively, which is a kind of block. I take one wound from the third attack, and now I'm going to attack using the rage, using the red from the source. That's attack four. And then I'm going to play this card. Oh, wait a second. Never mind. I'm going to do stamina, power with the blue crystal, that reduces that all the way to zero because that's move four. I'm using this red and this sideways. That's attack five. That kills the other zombies. At the end of my turn, I'm going to clean up my play area. So all the blues came in handy. That's now a green. These go away. And my skill came in handy. That was nice. I get two more faction tokens. We have... What are you called? The Ghostly Elixir. One, at uh, one attack on a single action card becomes a ranged attack, and the other one is the Vial of Toxin. One source of physical attack gains plus three in uh, plus three attack, plus two in ranged, or plus one in siege. This bonus is lost if the attack is no longer physical. I also get four Fane. That gets me from four up to eight. Since I leveled up, I go to nine. That gives me another command token. These tokens can go away. I'm going to draw up to my hand limit, which is five. But I only have three cards left. Norwas declares end of round. As of course he does. He's a jerk. On my turn, I'm going to use... I'm going to spend... A, well, I get a, it's a day, so I don't get a black man. I'm going to use this green to seal that. When I seal that, I get plus one reputation. So we're at the reputation plus two. Um, ooh, can I recruit? No. Oh, I'm at reputation plus two. Even better. We're not going to do that. We're going to spend this blue crystal to seal that. That gives me plus one reputation. And I should have done it at the end of the battle last turn. There's no reason why I couldn't have. Um, because reputation effects happen at the end of the turn. I don't know. Either way, I did it in a way that I have plus two now. Because remember, I started here, killed a rampaging enemy, and then finally sealed the graveyard. I'm going to use this blue for move four. This is move five, six. That gets me here. And now I'm going to use... Threaten. I'm going to use the red from here. That's reputation f influence five, influence six, seven. Oh, I also could have just discarded one of those, but I would rather not do that. So I used all my blue crystals, but that's fine. I have pretty decent access to crystals because, you know, I am freaking Goldex. And I'm going to get myself the Northern Monks. So I want the Illusionists. Northern Monks have Ice Attack or Block 4. A lot of Fire Attack with the Elementalist, with the Dark Crusader faction. Illusionist give me the Influence, which is nice. And I think I take... It's, uh, it's tough. Target enemy does not attack. We get to power that with a white. I'll take the Northern Monks. I think that extra, having elemental attack like that is a super hard to come by, so we're going to just grab it while we can. Especially since I know I have decent access to blue crystals. All right, at the end of my turn, since I used the stronger effect of Threaten, I don't know what I'm doing over here. Uh, it's like I've never played this game. Uh, we're going to lose one reputation, so we're back to reputation plus one. I'm going to roll that die. It's green. This comes off. These come off. And that, my friends, is the end of the turn. So I'm standing on Kindling. I can burn that down next turn. These, this is going to go away. This gets added to Norwas's deck. These two come down. We're adding a white crystal, which isn't great. This goes away. We're adding another thing over here to the unit offer. It's Force of Nature. This gets added to the advanced action offer. It is Dodge and Weave. These new move down. The next spell is Meditation. 
Whirlwind will go on the bottom of the deck. These four dice come away. We're re-rolling those. It's a gold, which is garbage at night. We have a red and two greens. It is 50% basic, so it does count. These will come here, and we're going to get four new regular units in the unit offer. We have the Uthum Crossbowmen. We have the Scouts! We have Scouts, Sagitt! And I can recruit them in a, in, <laughs> in a monastery. And then we have the uh, Guardsmen. Shuffling my deck. I can get this off the board. Oh! Correct. Correct, correct. Um, I get a reward for liberating that thing. It would have been one of those three cards. I would have taken Mountain Lore. Because it's so good. And then on my last... It would have been my last turn. I would have had three more move. And remember, I had six moves. So I actually have... I could actually explore twice. Thank you, Dursu. I'll kind of... Let me talk about this in a second. I'm going to put this here and this here. So I played Mountain Lore in that turn. I had no other way to make that work with the ceiling and whatever and having the red. And I had to do it all in one turn. I would have wanted the red from the source. So I would have definitely used the red. I definitely would have used the blue for move four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I moved from there. It was day. So I could have explored twice. I definitely would have taken that opportunity. All right. So let me, again, I'll kind of, and this is going to be into my, my deck. So this guy is going to be a necromancer, not the necromancer, just a necromancer. We're going to have a uh, mage tower garrison over here. That's what happens when I don't play these scenarios in a while. This is a mage tower garrison over here. And then we have a keep garrison over here. We have not found the, the second graveyard. This would go here. Uh, this is going to, this would have come out. Then this gets added to Norobus's deck. So that's not great because it's another white. Uh, Dodge and Weave would have come over. Force of Nature would have come out. Dodge and Weave would have come here. Because everything's shifted one, yeah. Dodge would have come there, and then this would have come here. Peaceful moment. That makes sense. Because if you think about it, yeah, everything just got would have been one earlier in sequence because one card would have been taken out uh, from the deck. So when you liberate the first graveyard, you get an advanced action. So I, I should have taken that advanced action. I would have had to use it again. I had one more turn after I liberated the grave, so I would obviously use all my movement, and I would have had four movement left to do all that exploring, which is super, super helpful to get that done at the end of day one. So now I'm sitting here. I got this. This uh, that is a necromancer, right? Yeah, the shrouded necromancer. Uh, so his attack would be a. Darker Crusader faction green enemy. Uh, he is fortified, so range attack will not work against him, so it has to be siege or nothing at all. He's got three fame plus a token if you defeat him. He's got five armor, so not the greatest. All right. Warlord Drake says, you reveal once you enter. All right. Thank you, Warlord, uh, with a yes. Brian's got a kiss for us later. Good luck, Greg. Bye all. Back to work. See you, Brian. Have a good one. Warlord Drake says, take your advanced action card for liberating the graveyard. You can seal the graveyard at the end of combat, so you could get the rep increase right from the next turn. Check the chat. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, let's assume you may pick Mountain Lore and explore another tile for the end of the round. Also, remember Pursuit. Oh. Ah. Glad someone actually knows this game. This guy pursues. Now, he will not attack me when I'm in the monastery because it's a place where interaction can have, take place, but he will indeed attack me if I burn the monastery down or when I burn the monastery down. Uh, so that it is something else I'm going to need to be prepared for. Oh, the joys. All right. So we have 70 cards on Orbis' deck. We added both a white crystal and another white card in the four-round game. That could be so super dangerous to do, especially when you're as lucky as I am. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, and 17. 
I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That makes sense because I added two advanced actions, one for liberating the graveyard and one for my very first level up. Huh. What to do, what to do. Now remember, the northern monks want no part of me burning down this monastery. Dodge and weave is a super attractive card. The scouts are something I can recruit. So that might be of interest. I'm really having a hard time shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. We're going to put this down here. I already rolled the dice in the source. Let me draw my opening hand. It's going to be five cards. We have Determination, Swiftness, Tranquility, Swiftness, and March. I have no white. I have no influence. <laughs> I really want influence cards, kids. I don't have a... Uh, this flips. <sighs> yeah, it's not a great... Six. Do I get dodge and weave? Do I get the scouts while I have the chance? I could also do this keep, get the Uthum Cross Bowman. Probably makes sense than going this long way around, right? I know the magical glades on the very next tile, so that's something to keep in mind. The next time I liberate a magical glade, I will get or a graveyard, um, I will get a spell. So that's something I know is coming my way. So the Mage Towers are even less attractive. Let me do preparation. And let me get... I think I really like Dodge and Weave a lot. We'll, we'll focus on the bottom. Glad I'm reshuffling this. I'm going to take Threaten. And reshuffle that. We're going to roll for Norawas's uh, tactic. He's taking number one. So one and five are out. Norawas is first. And Norawas, what you got, sir? So it's a blue. Uh, it's going to be a white. No, it's a green. Wolf, he's pulled off no whites, though. <laughs> so he's got five white cards and only uh, 13 cards left. So that's that's a bad ratio, kids. I'm going to use Threaten. Play this card sideways. That is going to be Influence 6 because I have the plus one there. I'm going to lose a reputation at the end of the turn. And I'm going to take myself some Dodge and Weave. We'll go there, and then I draw to my hand limit, which is five. Going to roll that. It's a red. No access to green or white. Uh, no access to white mana, which is... Not great. All right, Norwaz's turn. It's a green, it's a red. Oh, had to be a white. One, two, three. So it went through 10 cards in two turns. I'm going to attack the Necromancer. The Necromancer is attacking me with a Dark Crusader enemy. It is a Skeletal Warrior. I'm going to use the Northern Monks for block three. And now I just need four attack. I will oh, I could do that. That's probably smarter. 
Oh, then he goes away. And now I just need five attack against that dude. I'll play Swiftness. Oh, I have no whites. Oh, this is really bad. I will play... No attack cards. This is really gross. I'll play Determination for attack two. I'll play this Vial of Toxin. I'll add attack three to that. That's enough to kill the Shrouded Necromancer. That's three fame. One, two, three. That's going to be one of these things. It is the Vampiric Chalice. Once per one common discern for each enemy you defeat, you may discard a wound up to a maximum of four. Could be helpful. I don't love it, love it. You don't like redraw a card and you don't throw it away. It's not healing, you're just discarding it. That violet toxin goes away. I have four cards on my deck. I will draw. I didn't use any dice from this source. Oh man. Yeah, sources these cards are just not great for And the mana situation is just terrible. The mana is banned. It, the source is just hasn't come together. I'm also going to use on this turn Amid of Reawakening, put a card at random from this card, I'll put it at the bottom of my D deck. Great. So I'm going to shuffle these and then I get to draw. Plus one at the end of the turn. Oh, from my discard. That would not have been my discard yet. And this, hopefully, I could pull Crystal Joy or something. Or, oh, yeah, Crystal Joy is really what I need. Yeah, that, that mana is un problemo. So one of these comes out, goes to the bottom of my D deck, and then I draw two more cards. This would have been discarded, so I actually draw three more cards. No, two more cards, yeah, because I have four, I get five, and then six. Wolf Focus is great. Mountain Lore, I will take Wolf Focus. That is excellent. Excellent, excellent. All right, that should work. Uh, Norwas's turn is a white, it's a green, it's a green, one more. So he's gone through 14 cards in three turns. That's rough. I'm now burning down the Monastery. Uh, we're going to get a random Maze Tower Garrison. Oh, I defeated a uh, Rampaging Enemy. So that's plus one. Right, I started there, plus one, plus one. Liberated, and then I used Threaten twice. Yeah, so we get the plus one for that. I'm, I'm uh, burning the Monastery, so minus three. So back to the very dead center. And then we get, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> a Fire Golem. Uh, wow. Well, that's interesting. So I need eight attack to kill this dude. And he's got brutal, so none of that's going to work. I can get a white, reduce his attack to zero, but then I wouldn't have any more... I wouldn't be able to get the attack I need. Like, how is this, like, just not coming together? All right. Well, going to have to do it this way. So I'm going to play Dodge and Weave. I reduce his attack by two. His attack is now a one. Even with Brutal, it becomes a two. I take one wound. Since I took a wound, I don't get the addition of plus one in the attack phase since I did take a wound. I'm now going to, in the melee phase, play Will Focus. I get the, you're going to power it with the green from the source. I get the stronger effect of swiftness plus three, so that's attack six. And I'm going to, I'm also going to play Vampiric Chalice. After combat for each enemy I defeat, I could discard a wound because I obviously have to get through my deck because Norwas is uh, putting severe pressure on me because he's a jerk. And then I'm going to play 
Uh, these two cards sideways, that gives me a total of attack six. I need physical attack six because that dude has physical resistance. He's now super dead. At the end of my turn, because of Vampiric Chalice, I get to discard this wound. It's not healed, it's just discarded. And now I'm left with Mountain Lore. I'm cleaning up my play area. That's now a white. That's helpful. These all go away. I'm going to get a certain amount of fame. What? How much fame? I get five fame, so 12 to 17, plus one because I went up a level, and I already lost my reputation. I'm going to get my reward for the combat. That reward is going to be a artifact. This goes away. Artifacting it. We get the Sword of Justice or the Holy Grail. Sword of Justice, hello, welcome to the team. Haven't had that in quite a while. For those who don't know, what's the Sword of Justice? The regular effect is when you play this, discard any number of cards in your hand. You get attack three for each card you discard this way. Fame plus one for each enemy you defeat this turn. Or I can break it, double the contribution of all physical attacks you play during the attack phase this turn. Enemies lose physical resistance this turn. Fame plus one for each enemy you defeat this turn. Super, super strong. That should have a shield on it. If you like it, then you gotta put a shield on it. And now I'm going to draw up to my hand limit, which is... Oh, I, now I do a level up as well. <sighs> no flight. More mana, please. Sure, why not? That's not going to be very useful. So, is what it is. Now we have, to go along with our magic craft crap, we have our red crystal craft. And now I also get an advanced action. We'll take force of nature. This goes down. That will work. And now I draw to my hand, which is five. So mountain lore, force of nature, sword of justice, rage, and march. That's fine. I think we're good. Will I have the movement to get in there? I need move six to get into there. I do have mountain lore. Let's move five. Block six. Yeah, I'm going to try to take down that keep this turn because I just, I need to keep moving. Norwas is going to declare end of round next turn because woof. My turn. Because woof. The official answer. Answer of Champions. Uh, it's not the most amazing cards I've ever had, but I think it should be enough. So I'm going to play March for move four. Mountain Lore for move five, six, seven. I'm going to enter the keep since I there are no ramp pursuit enemies on the board. Since I enter the keep, I do lose a reputation for sieging a fortified site. Oh, it's the thugs. They're a, They're fantastic. <laughs> Really nice to see. Um, siege attack. If he attacks, two wounds. If I block, block four, block five. Great. I'm going to power that with, I'm going to use this to get a blue crystal and a green mana. I'm going to use Force of Nature to block the thugs. I'm going to use this to get a blue crystal and a red mana. I'm going to power Rage. And use Sword of Justice sideways to get attack five. Since everyone's really happy to defeat the thugs, they I get a reputation plus one. At the end of that, we get two fame that gets me from 18 to 20. And then we get a shield on the keep. So plus one to my card draw next turn. Cleaning up my play area. This goes away. That's a white. These go away. And this all goes into my discard. Drawing to my hand limit, which is six. Stamina. Mana draw. Improvisation, Rage, Promise, and then again, it's six. Why? It's six because we're in a keep. Uh, do I recruit? So dumb. <laughs> I'm wondering if I just recruit, explore maybe. Um, there's like so many, there's two cards I'm not even getting to know. One we know it's threatened, so we knew I wasn't getting to that, but the others, I guess it's like a Rage. And Crystal Joy. So that's fine. Norwas declares end of round. Checking the chat. Uh, War of the Drakes is influence card for AAC plus scouts for the for Sagittarius Joy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, 
Sajid would have been happy if I took the scouts. I'm, I really like the Utham crossbowmen. I also like the Utham guardsmen. I, if I can move and explore, though, and get a bunch of stuff on the board, it's probably smarter. So that way, that's influence four. Oh, I can use two. That's great. I'm going to play mana draw to play two, to be able to use two things. I'm going to play improvisation and discard rage. I'm not planning to do any attacks this turn with the cards over in my hand. And that's going to be move five. I'm using the first two points of move to put this on the board. Act surprised. It is a, uh, we're going to get this dude on the board uh, with a shield. So it's a gibbering ghoul. So he now has pursuit. We have a graveyard on the board. It's going to be a face down green enemy and a face down brown enemy from the Dark Crusader faction. I have three more points of move. That's four. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play Stamina to give me seven more points of move. That's going to get me all the way out there. So I'm losing my keep hand draw, but I'm pretty far out now. I could explore again to get a core tile on the board. Oh, it's going to be five points of move at night. That's a little gross, but remember, I can always I can always uh, uh, pillage the village. And now I'm going to use a... Oh, now that's the end of my movement phase. End of my movement phase, a gibbering ghoul moves one. Remember, he can't attack me in the village because it's going to place... It's a place where interaction can take place. And now I'm going to play Promise. I'm going to use Mana Draw to use a second die from the source. And then I'll use Stamina Sideways. That's Influence 5. And that's going to give me the Utham Guardsman. I did want the Crossbowman, but I did not have the extra influence to make that work. Gibbering Ghoul is just going to chill there for a while, but I can definitely wipe him out. Might not be the worst idea, because if I go there, interaction is not possible there, he would just join me there, so I'm going to have to defeat him at some point for sure. Both of these dice get rolled. It's a white and a gold. That's the end of my turn. Also is the end of my round. All right, Monastery's burn, so no more advanced actions there. These cards go away. We're going to get four new regular units because I do not have a core tile on the board yet. So we have Los Illusionists, the Thugs, the Herbalists, and the Guardian Columns. And now we're going to roll these four dice. It is a white, a white, a green, and a blue. These all go in here. I'll put those back down for now. We're going to add a red card to Norwas's D deck. We're adding a blue crystal to his inventory. That is nice. And the next card off is Restoration. So, <laughs> it's not great. Because, again, when I liberate that graveyard, I'm going to get a spell. And I don't love those spells. The spells at the start of the game were obviously a lot better. But, you know... It is what it is. Checking the chat. Uh, wait, they move toward you in a subsequent turn, not when you reveal them? Ah, uh, cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. Is it subsequent turns? For the following turn, yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, he won't pursue me until the, the next turn, which is, which is fine. I mean, ultimately, yeah, so if I move into that graveyard, he's going to kill me, or he's going to attack me. Um... Did pretty aggressively use those little relics. But you know, I think we'll be I think we'll be okay. Alright, this will come here. Uh cards I never got to were Crystal Joy, Swift Bolt, and uh Threaten. Well the second time for Threaten. Glad I got the Guardsman, not loving that offer. I mean, the Thugs, I guess, were right. I'm glad to have moved the 7 where I did. I mean, I can re I can explore twice. Hang out on this, uh, hang on on this 
this um, village for a little bit. I do want to go first. I do have one wound in my deck. I'm going to draw up to my hand limit, which is five. One, two, three, four, five. Not much going on there. Remember, I can pillage the village before my first turn. Sword of Justice can be super helpful. I think it's more important for me to go first with Norwas having so many white things in his deck. So many white crystals in his inventory and white cards in his deck. Oh, it's day, right? Um, I, I, I don't know what I was talking about. It's only going to be three to get in there during the day. I was in night. Sorry. I s misspeak and left on right today. All right. I'll take early bird. I don't think rethink or mana steel are really worth it. These influence cards with sword of justice are great. I don't have a block card, but I do have two units that I can use for block. Uh, if I go first, I explore two tiles liberate that graveyard and then come back down. I think that will be a stronger situation. So I'm definitely going first. All the day tactics can go away. And uh, let's make some magic happen. So I get my two my two skills back. So I'm playing March. I'm powering it with the green. I'm going to spend the four move. Or do I want to pillage? Now nah, pillage next turn. I don't think there's much point pillaging this turn. Is it... Is there? Maybe. Definitely maybe. Sure, I'll actually I would have pillars of village to draw two more cards. I could do that you could do that before your first turn of any round for sure. Really trying to dig for that wound, because then I could make use of tranquility and get the wound out of my deck. I only have one wound at this point. So with my move four, I'm gonna explore here. It's gonna be a core tile. It's the blue city. We have found the necropolis. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I obviously can't attack it yet, but we're going to get a Dark Crusader uh, Vampire. It is a uh, Draconum. Uh, what is it? What is our, What are you? Death Dragon? I think he's a Death Dragon. What is your name? Who are you? Yep, Death Dragon it is. He's got Paralyzed, Attack 7. Remember, he's got Pursuit, but he will not enter there because... Um, that thing, that thing that I keep saying and keep forgetting about, I'm, <laughs> I'm really struggling because pursuit doesn't trigger until the next round, but, oh, because, because interaction can happen there, he will not actually, pursuit will actually not allow him to enter there. Uh, and now we're going to explore again with the last two points of movement because why the heck not? It's now the green city, so we have an orc over here that also has pursuit. So I guess I'm killing two orcs and some dragons. Fantastic. And this orc is what? This is a sorceress of some sort? A corrupted priest. Yeah. And that's also going to have a pursuit token. Uh, we're going to have another. We have to shuffle these things, because of course we do. Thank you, Tesla. This goes here. We have a uh, skeletal warrior. They have pursuit. So we're just going to have to clear out all these enemies with pursuit. This is here. It's going to have one shield for me and one shield for Norobus on there. You can kit if you want. I mean, it's not a terrible idea to have the city cards available. Greg says, as he has no idea where they are. <laughs> Uh, are they here? I mean, I should have them out. That's not them. Because remember, like, all the all the things you could do at a city normally are still active. Oh, here we go. Nope, that's the Volcaris card. What the heck? I'm dropping things. Here we go. I knew I had them out. All right, so the green city card is up here. Again, we're not attacking there, but the reason why you want the card is now we know we can spend six influence for an advanced action, either from the offer or a random one off the top of the deck. 
which I've never done in Maze Night and would highly not recommend. Uh, the blue city, again, doesn't exist in this scenario. It is just the necropolis. But we have a mage, a monastery came in the board, so we do get an advanced action. A lot of things happened this round. <laughs> Nothing happened, and everything happened all at once. Agility goes there. Alrighty then. Um, at the end of my movement phase, which is now... Ooh... At the end of my movement phase, this guy comes in. I'm tempted to kill that dragon before he's a problem. I have the cards in my hand to do it. I'm burning a lot of cards, but the dragon's going to be a problem. I need the block seven. One attack on a single action card becomes ranged. Now the um, corrupted priest is entering. It has a defend one. That means the first enemy you attack in a turn that involves the corrupted priest, you have to... Uh, add one to its defense. Now that indeed could be the Corrupted Priest. So that if you kill the Corrupted Priest, then it would just take six instead of five. If you have two enemies that have defend abilities, you can trigger them in either order you want. And you could kill, you apply the first defend bonus to the first enemy you kill who might have the second defend bonus and the second defend would actually just go away. Um, it becomes like a, it's cool, I like it. I don't, I don't love the mechanic. But I think we have to take out this Draconum because otherwise it's going to start pursuing me over there, and it's just going to be a big problem. So I'm going to take on the Draconium. I have block seven there. I'm going to play the Sword of Justice. I'm going to discard these three cards. That gives me attack nine. That kills the Death Dragon. I said Draconium Summoner. I mean the Death Dragon. So again, it was seven attack. I had block three plus block four. Uh, so Paralyzed doesn't trigger. We get 6 fame. I go from 20 to 26, plus 1 because of the special rules. And we get a faction token. The faction token is plus 2 movement. The Staff of Concealment, move 2. Your movement does not provoke rampaging enemies or enemies with ambush this turn. Any, also, any enemies pursuing you are not moved and do not attack you this turn. So super interesting. And then this dude is Audi. And I did shuffle those up, so I'll put that stack back here. Done. Plus two reputation as well, so that gets me back to zero. I get plus one fame because of the Sword of Justice. It's plus one for each enemy you defeat this turn, so that will go there, and I get another command token as well. So now my hand limit is six. I could also consider recruiting this turn, but obviously I use my influence cards here. Does that change how I would want to do that? Knowing all of that, I got no real new information. The thugs are going to be extra, but I could get the I could get the herbalists. Uh, sure, I would have used the tranquility card and kept promise instead, because that makes some sense. Because I was getting plus three reputation. A plus two reputation for defeating the. No, I moved the wrong thing. I was here. I got plus two, plus one fame. Not an extra reputation for the sword of justice. Yeah, because I was here. I got plus two reputation. 28, 26, 27, 28. Yeah, I, I just moved the wrong thing one more time. So we're at zero. I am here. I can consider recruiting. I think I want promise. The herbalists are looking pretty good because then I could ready one of these guys again, and I like how that will work. I'm going to roll this die. It's blue. So, yeah, when I got the plus one because of the, the Sword of Justice, I just moved the reputation track instead of the fame track. So sorry about that. Uh, end of my turn, I draw to my hand limit, which is six. It's my wound, it's rage, it's swiftness, and it's mountain lore. 
I will pillage the village to get two more cards. It's determination and it's crystal joy. Uh, remember three, two, three points of influence in a. Uh, this actually Norwell should have another skill here as well. Um, it's his cooperative skill. It's kind of garbage in my opinion. Calming the weather. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. So not really gonna take that. At three influence gives you a point of healing in a, uh, in a, in a village. So I can get four. Five, six, get the herbalists. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. Oh, I also have these. I could use this. I don't really need to move much. I'll get the three influence that way. That's probably stronger. All right, Norawas's first turn of the round, if you believe it. Uh, we get a mana pull. It's a blue and a red. No red crystals in Norwas's inventory. So still 15 cards here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. My turn. Remember, now all these guys are pursuing me, but these two are just going to be stuck there until I decide to take care of them. On my turn, I'm going to not move. End of my move phase, this guy comes in. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to interact. I'm going to use this white die from the source that's influence 4. I'm going to discard the Staff of Concealment to get me influence 7. With that influence 7, I'm going to get one point of healing to get the wound out of my deck. And then I'm going to grab the Herbalists. The Thugs are fine, but I think the Herbalists are just a little bit better for what I need right now. Plus the Herbalists, the, the Thugs cost me 2 more, which I don't have. With the Herbalist, I'm going to use this healing effect. And I will re-ready the Northern Monks, because why not? I think that none of these guys have swiftness. And we are fine. I will also... Get some. Yeah, I have to take out these three orcs. Yeah, exploring there is kind of a mistake, but you know, it felt like something I wanted to do at the time. I just getting the two. I knew the green city was a, a possibility. Getting two more orcs out of there out of nowhere. I'm not going to explore this. I wonder if this would have been. Yeah, that would have been kind of better because I wouldn't have ended up with any more enemies with pursuit now that are going to make my life nice and difficult. At some point getting flight would be super helpful because then I could just fly over to that monastery which would make me happy. I mean, by the way, I mean, since we're pausing a little bit, the necromancer should be in play and we're doing a level 7 necromancer so we'll probably we'll just mark this with a crystal to kind of give us some idea of where he's starting. Yeah, we're over here. So he's going to have one Draconum, two monsters, and a a uh, a green enemy to deal with. Um, I'm really trying to debate whether I'm using Crystal Joy. I think I am. Yeah, I need more reds, so I'm going to. Uh, but that's that's silly. That's silly. Silly Billy. Ugh. The problem is I move there, both of those guys get sucked in, and that's super annoying. Would two enemies of the pursuit both enter the same location is an interesting question. Pursuit. I guess they would. Yeah, I should... Uh. What's his attack? His attack is a cold fire attack of a four. Well, isn't that lovely? Yeah, I would really like will focus people. 
I would really like Will Focus. Because then I could just wipe him out, wipe him out, wipe him out. Like, that's fine. I'll get a bunch of faction tokens. Really, by the end of this round, I just want to kill those three enemies and liberate that graveyard. And then I could deal with the Necromancer all in the last round. I should have enough pop in my deck to make that work, especially with the Sword of Justice. But I'm pretty ahead of the game at this, at this point. So Norwaz is only going through three cards. So I'm just not going to discard any more cards. I rolled that. It's a red. I draw to my hand limit, which is six. I pillage the village, which is one and two. Dodge and weave is interesting. Did not get... Oh, that will work. Right, I can make it work that way. Norwas is second turn. It's a red. It's a green. It's a red. No red crystal. So 12 cards left in Norwas's deck. My turn. I'm going to attack this dude because he's the worst of the bunch. And I'll probably just move there and have those two join me at once, I think. I don't know. So the Shroud of Neck, uh, the, uh, the uh, Corrupted Priest is attacking me with a cold fire attack of a four. I'm going to play dodge and weave. I'm going to power that with a white. I'm reducing his attack from a four down to a zero. Since I took no wounds, I gain attack two. And total, I'm going to need attack six because of that defend ability. He's got plus one to his defend. I'm going to play rage. First, I'm going to use that skill to get a blue crystal and a red mana using that red mana to power rage that's attack six i've killed the corrupted priest corrupted priest gives me three fame that gets me from 28 to 31 i get another one of these tokens it's the staff of concealment and i get plus one to my reputation that gets me back to zero all right this goes away we roll this it's green these both come out I draw to my hand, which is six. I'm already at it. I'm going to pillage the village to get two more. By the way, when I ended my movement for the time before my action, this guy would have moved. Oh, interesting. Could have had him move here just to keep it simple because it's equally close to me if he would have moved here remember because the they pursuit triggers before the action um would i have wanted to attack both of them on the same turn no not with my mana situation so and there's no sense in grouping because the defend power makes that all kind of funny so we did him one of the times so he moved here i chose to attack the corrupted priest in a different space there's nothing saying i have to group them together if i can so we'll just kind of leave it there and then i pill as a village i get two more cards we have force of nature and we have stamina these are this is looking good for taking down the graveyard but first and foremost, your hand is higher if you move it to hills or mountains. I haven't done that yet. Am I going to get a level up? Nope, that's just one fame. That's just two. Excellent. And by excellent, I mean garbage. Still have not seen Will Focus. All right, Norwas is third turn. One, two, and three. It's green. One more card. He's gone through 10 cards. He has eight left. Bunch of whites, though, so he could definitely blow through that in two turns. I probably want all of that siege attack three. I had the green mana there. We'll focus. Great. I'm going to play. I'll stay where I am. Gibbering Ghoul. The Skeletal Warrior attacks with a 3 and has 4 armor. The Gibbering Ghoul attacks with a 4 and has 4 armor, but he also has Vampiric. So if he gives me a wound, his armor increases. 
Uh, trying to think. I still have improvisation, so I know that's a strong card. I still have will focus. That's a strong card. She can be range attack six. Determination. The northern monks gives me potential ice attack four. All right. I'm going to take out this gibbering goal. I'm going to play rage. I'm going to power it with this red. And then I'm going to add this. So I take one physical attack, have ranged. Um, if it became an elemental attack, he would lose uh, this ability, but it did not. So that's out. This dude's dead. That's two fame. That's another of these. So again, I can discard a wound for each enemy I defeat. I get a reputation back, so that goes there. He's out. He's out. I'm going to roll this card. It's white. Remember, at the end of that movement, he wouldn't have moved because um, I'm on a place where interaction is possible. I'm going to lose a reputation and draw two more cards. Oh, yeah. Uh, where's Will Focus, man? I still have not seen Will Focus. That's bananas. <laughs> Why is it on the bottom of my deck? Every turn. Um, okay. I really need Will Focus to make this magic happen. That's a range attack seven. It's just too good. I get the white there. I guess I just kill this guy this turn. I mean, it's getting redundant, guys. All right, Nora was his turn. It's a white, it's a green, it's a white. Three more. One, two, three. My turn. Fine, I'll kill the Skeletal Warrior because why not? I mean, in theory, I should have set this. Let me do that too. All right, so when this got put on the board, we have one red, two monsters, and one green enemy. This is the Necromancer's horde of wonderful creatures. Uh, yeah, I'll take on the Skeletal Warrior because I can. I will... It's just one wound. I don't really want to waste any cards or block. I want to make sure I can kill the graveyard next turn, so I'm going to play that. I can discard a wound for each wound I take for each enemy I defeat. I'm going to take one wound, and now I just need attack four. I don't want to use that white. Great. I'll play Crystal Joy. It's a special effect. I'll take a white. I'll use that white to power swiftness, and then I'll use a stamina sideways to get me attack four in the melee phase. That defeats him, and then because of this, I get to discard that wound because I defeated the Vampiric Talus. I can discard a wound because I defeated an enemy. That's out. I get another token. It is, I can turn a black into a gold and a gold into a black. I get plus one fame. That gets me to 34. Plus one reputation. That gets me there. He's out. This is done. I killed all of the enemies with pursuit. That's a gold. Done, done, and done. Oh, I could discard a card to get Crystal Joy back in my hand. Sure, I'll discard Stamina to put Crystal Joy back in my hand. I could have discarded a Wound, too, because it did power Crystal Joy with the blue. I draw to my hand of it, which is six. I'm going to Pillars of Village to get two more. There's Will Focus. Thank God it was not the last card on the deck. Since I Pillars of Village, we go back to zero. It's been a really weird round. Norwas declaring end around next turn. Fantastic for them. I'm playing Mountain Lore. I'm going in here. We're attacking this round in the Necropolis, in the uh, graveyard. Remember, night rules apply. So I cannot use that gold. We're going to use this thing to get me a green, a blue crystal and a green mana. And now we have a, another Skeletal Warrior who just has four um, that stuff. <laughs> Four armor with fire resistance, and then we have 
the Domon de Song. The Domon de Song is attacking with a six. It is arcane immune, so it's, it's immune to all the non-attack, non-effects of things. It's also got fire resistance, so they're both immune to non-attack, non-block effects from anything powered by a red mana. We have um, Brutal, and it has Assassin, so those wounds cannot be assigned to any of my units. But here we are, kids. I just need 10. Excellent. I'm going to play Will Focus. I really no need to complete that thought. We're going to use this green mana to Will Focus. That's range attack 7. And then I'm going to use this white mana with Swiftness for range attack 10. I can group them because neither of them are physical, have physical resistance. So they're both dead. I get two of these tokens. I can make any one physical attack into a range attack. And then again, the same, I can put a black, turn a black into a gold or a gold into a black. Again, I cannot use both of those on the same turn. I, at the end of my turn, will spend a blue to, to seal it, get this all done on one turn. So let me kind of make the math, figure out the math now. Cleaning out my play area, that's a blue. I still haven't used these Northern Monks, which is kind of bananas. <laughs> this is crazy. I have force of nature like yeah this is nutty this all goes away i'm gonna get six fame i already took these two tokens the six fan gives me a 40 plus one because of the rules for blitz and since i sealed it with the blue crystal i get plus one reputation i'm also gonna take a spell uh, i'll take possessed i don't love it but it's better than them having another white crystal and I'm also going to get a level up uh, because of that. So we're looking at my next two skills. Please give me flight. Uh, I just want flight. <laughs> the whole game. That's all I wanted was flight. I mean, I guess it's 40% of the time I'm not going to get it. Universal power. Once a turn, you may add one mana to a card play sideways. If you do, the card gains plus three instead of plus one. If it's an, uh, if it's an action or spell card of the same color, it gives plus four. Or I can get a blue and a white, which, I don't know. I think I just take this, call it a day. This comes out, and here we are. I'm going to draw to my hand limit, which is, oh, I get an advanced action as well. With my advanced action... I'll take... Spell Forge. Get a bunch of mana for next turn. Why not? This comes down. Do I want to drop a card? I will drop. Uh, I'll drop Determination. I think get the rest of the cards on my deck. Here we go. Alrighty then. We're going to go to Norwas's turn. He declares end of round. My turn. I've already liberated that sucker. I'm going to move. Again, I can't use a gold because I'm in there. But as soon as I move out of there, I'm, I could in theory, but that's fine. I have this move two as well. So we have move two because who the heck needs that anymore? Can I burn down the monastery is kind of where I'm at right now. Move two. Move six. Move nine. Move six, move seven, move eight. I only need seven. What am I doing? Huh. I hold on to all of these. Move two, move six, move seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're adjacent to this. The lights are bright. We can see the enemies there. We have a zombie horde. We have a, a vampire. We have a skeletal... Warrior? No. I'm sorry, these are monsters. My bad. We have a vampiric dragon, we have a zombie horde, and then the monsters are 
a mummy, and a vampire. The northern monks are not going to help me. So I can't count on them. But I can get up to 8 range plus siege attack. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm going to burn down the monastery. Minus three. We're getting a dude here. What are we? It's the Fire Mage. Fantastic. So I'm going to play Spell Forge. I'm going to power the blue from my inventory. I get up to two crystals. I'm the same colors as spells in the offer. I'm going to get a red and a green. I'm going to play Force of Nature. That's Siege Attack 3. And then I'm going to play Improvisation. That's Siege Attack 5, or Range Attack 5, because I'm adding that. And that's fine. Let's just take out this Monastery. That's going to have a flag on it. And again, I, I, root, I ruined any chance of getting something from here, but you know I'm not that worried about it. I kind of like where I'm at. Uh, and we've wiped out the Fire Mage, or the Ice Mage. Ice Mage gets me up to 46. And hopefully this was worth it. What do we get? Well, let me clean up my play area. That's out. This is out. We still have this too. Oh, I could have done... No. I only needed six, right? I only needed six, so I could have done this sideways played this with a blue because I have so much access to blue held on to crystal joy I wouldn't be able to use crystal joy but at least I kept the red crystal in my inventory which I think could be really important so yeah I like that idea a lot so northern monks they were re-readied nothing ever happened there but I get to save a red crystal by take using a uh, universal power ability there great clean up my play area so i end up with oh i did use the green i had to use the green on force of nature so i just saved the one red which is which is good these go out so the green gave me three siege attack the improvisation gave me three range attack because i used it with that ability over there uh and then we got my fame it does not give me a level up i do get my reward crystal joy still in my hand but at the end of the round so i'm just going to put it in my discard pile anyway Roll this die for no good reason. That's now a gold. The next two artifacts are the Soul Harvester for attack eight, Mysterious Box. Yeah, I'll take the attack eight and be happy. This goes in here. So pretty powerful deck. I mean, the Sword of Justice, the Soul Harvester, uh, Possessed could be fairly interesting. Movement into the Necropolis is always two. Night rules are going to apply, but it's going to be night anyway. We're doing a level 7. Remember, just like when fighting Volcare, you also have to fight the Necromancer every round. However, the Necromancer is defeated by defeating all of his levels. Then that is the end of the game. Any remaining faction enemies just go away and run scared, which is totally fine. Now, not, I don't know why I always thought they had fire attack. I guess the Elementalist faction has all the Elemental, all the elemental attacks, so the Northern Monks actually haven't been all that powerful. But I'd rather have them than not. There, these, this is an unfortified situation. None of these enemies are that awful. My hand limit is only six still. I'm pretty close to a level up. Each fact, each level of the faction leader that you defeat, you do get three fame at the end of your turn. If you manage to defeat all remaining levels of the faction leader. Or okay, you always use the the level that you're on at the start of the battle. But if you defeat that level that many times in the siege or range attack phase, then the faction leader does not attack in the block and assign damage phase. Uh, but as the, that's a rare exception to the rule. Generally speaking, he will always attack you at the level that you start the battle with, no matter how many times you defeat him in the range or siege attack phase. You may save the blue crystal too.
Oh, yeah, good call. So what, since I didn't, right, 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 right. <clears throat> so I'll get to that in a second. So, uh, yeah, let me take care of the chat then. Uh, so Warlord saying, in the last turn, since I had a card left in my hand, I could have just discarded the card with Improvisation and got the range attack three that way. I didn't even need to spend the thing for universal power, so that makes more sense. So I'll save two crystals, which is super, super nice. So thank you, Dershu. All right, let me see what's going on. Um, Thomas says, as all, I, as all know, dragons are afraid of villages. <laughs> yeah, thematically, there's some disconnects here. Uh, Maze Knight 84, how late the game? Where are we at? World of Drake says, I smacked them the dragon. They work like any other rampaging enemy, so you provoke both of you move over to the graveyard. Also, to avoid combat pursuing enemies, you may use your staff for concealing, if that's the right name. It is staff for concealment, for sure. No need to spend the red crystal. You may save the blue crystal too. Siege attack three plus improv range attack three. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, saving two crystals is nice. We are adding a white card. So it's another reason I'm glad I got rid of the possess spell. And we're adding a green crystal. Um, I burned down both of these monasteries. So there is nothing else added to the unit offer. The next events action coming off is explosive bolt. These come down. And yeah, so that was just a weird round where we just basically had four enemies in pursuit. And I was able to just kind of spam the village, continually pillage it, get two extra cards, take down one at a time, because the rest of them were not going to come into places where interaction was possible. Again, it's a weird little, it's a weird rule. There's, it's, I think, one of the parts where Tesla just kind of falls off for me, where like there's those parts where you're like, okay. <laughs> Right, some of the rules. I think most of the rules in the base game are rather intuitive. Um, and I think the same set with Lost Legion and, and Krang. But then when you get to Tesla, sometimes it these scenarios kind of veer off into the why. Um, and it's like, because the rules say so. And you're like, okay, that's fine. We'll just go with that. So, but yeah, this, this should be a doable battle. Um, we'll see. I mean, I could definitely see things turning sideways. You know, one of the things you have to do when you're facing the faction leaders is you want to be careful how many times you defeat them, like what level you're leaving them at for subsequent turns. Because you leave them at some levels, all levels are not created equal, and some of those levels can be really, really brutal if you're not careful and aware of uh, what level they're going to be attacking you at in future rounds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 cards in Norwes's deck, which is perfecto. All right, all these cards come out. We're going to have elite units in the offer now. We have a catapults. Again, we could, if we wanted to, go up to that green city, try to get the catapults. There's really no point that I can see. Amata um, Frasers are also pretty good. Shock Troops are great. And the Foresters. So none of them were recruitable in a monastery, so I feel a little bit better about burning that sucker down. It was indeed a bit of a risk. I do think the monastery units... I mean, you have, I guess, the Sorcerers? Or are they are they monastery? Or are they just Mage Tower? I think the Sorcerers... Um, I think the monastery units are better for the regular units. Like the all the Savage Monks and Northern Monks are really great. The Red Cape Monks, if you can get them early in a game, like we got the Northern Monks here today, although they haven't been all that useful. I roll four dice, I get two golds, a white, and a red. Who's glad that I can turn one of those golds into a black if I get that possessed spell? So I'm drawing to my hand limit. My hand limit is six. So we get Spell Forge, Stamina, March, Promise, Swift Bolt, and Rage. Not the greatest deck that I've ever seen, but uh could be a good time to do some sparing power. Uh what do I want to do? Yeah, definitely not going in. Spare power. Green mana token could be useful. I mean if I had flight I would be so tempted to Go over to that village and just spam it. I still might do it. It's a lot of movement though, but like that's not getting flight is really annoying. <laughs> but also very me. I 
keep is all the way the heck back here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to go through some of these cards to get my strongest cards. But I'm just noting that I'm not going to have the ability to get a big hand other than sparing power. But that might be the way to go. The Necromancer is starting the battle attacking with, he's summoning, he's summoning two monster enemies. And that could be pretty gross. I mean, the Vampire is vampiric, the Mummy has poison, the Pain Wraith has paralyzed, because of course it does. And the Shroud and the the Mon de Song, which we've already seen, has Assassin and Brutal. If I spare power... As many turns as I can. Probably have gonna do this. I'm probably gonna have to do this in two two goes. Or do I just freaking move? Go to that village, using the sparing power, get a huge hand. It's gonna be move five back, but whatever. Let me spare power. I'll let Norwas go first. Don't even need to draw for him. And we'll see. Just want to get max cards in my hand. So Norwas gets a green. Put that up where you can see it. A red. And it is a white. So one, two, three. So only 13 cards left, right? So that's something to keep in mind. If I'm going all the way over there to that village. How many cards am I spending? How many cards am I really going to net? So sparing power, getting a card here. I'm going to drop promise. I'm going to drop March, drop Stamina. I'm going to play Spellforge. I'm going to power that with a blue and get a green and a red. Yeah, I didn't get my I didn't get motivation. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, the, the crystals have been nice. Don't get me wrong, but... Not a, not the greatest situation. So this goes away. These three guard, these four cards are discarded. I'm drawing four more. We get threaten, which is garbage. Dodge and weave is great. Swiftness is fine, and mana draw. I think I just drop this card. Draw one more. Or I drop this and mana draw. To be honest. I have so many crystals otherwise. But getting two whites could be useful. <sighs> Turning that into a black is going to be useful. I'm going to need move two to get in. All right. Nora was his turn. White, white, red. No more cards. Went through nine. Has... 10 left. I'm going to spare power. I think we spare power three times. And then go in. Tempted to drop this and threaten. Dodge and weave. We just want to attack by four. I'm not even sure how strong dodge and weave is going to be. I haven't, I haven't seen the soul harvester. I haven't seen the... Uh, the um, Sword of Justice. I haven't seen Will Focus. I haven't seen Possess. Gonna need a lot of whites. So I think Dodge and Weave all of a sudden has lost a lot of its allure. I'm going to drop Swiftness and Threaten and draw two more cards. Tranquility. Uh, drawing two cards would be helpful. And March. It's like 
half my deck. Alright, Norwest's turn. It's a red, it's a white, it's a green. Two more. One, two. I think I have to go in in case in case we have to do this in two turns because there's always a chance he goes to his entire deck and is declaring end around the turn after that. So I do want to give myself two cracks at this. I think I'll be fine. A big hand would be nice. Just doesn't seem like it's meant to be. So we're going to take care of the sparing power. Draw two cards in my hand. Oh, it's the friggin' wound. <laughs> like how? How is the one wound still in my hand? Oh, uh, that's absolutely amazing. Well, good times. I'm going to spend... I'm going to play Tranquility. I'm going to use this to get a blue crystal and a green mana. And I'm playing Tranquility to get two more cards. Crystal Joy and Rage. Wow. Mm, that's so bad. So I still have Soul Harvester. I still have uh, Sword of Justice. I still have Possess. They're all on my deck. I still have Will Focus. All on my deck. Instead, I'm left with this. That's awesome. And by awesome, I mean not entirely great. <laughs> great. I mean, not great. But, you know, it is what it is. So I think I go in, I plan on resting, I draw what should be a super strong hand, and then we have one more crack at this. Um, but I'm only going to be able to take five wounds. I probably take the max. Oh, so bad. So I got neither of my artifacts, and I did not get my spell. That's great. All right, we're going in. Here we go. This is us going in. I'm in. Look at me. Alrighty then. Let's uh, figure out these wounds. Rather systematically, right? So the Vampiric Dragon would be super bad. He's three wounds. It would be 17 for each. Uh, if I don't block him, it's it's three wounds to me. And then it's uh, it's every if me or anybody. So any wound he assigns, it's it's an extra to, to a unit or to me. It's plus one to his armor. So it would be, and he's got elusive, right? So it's eight or 16. So it would actually be 19 to defeat him in the melee phase. These guys are just cumbersome. Um, they have cumbersome. They're one attack each. If I don't spend any movement points to reduce that or block each of those separately, that is going to be uh, three wounds. The vampire has also has elusive, so that's two wounds. So he'd be at twelve if I don't block him. And then the skeletal warrior, or sorry, the mummy, physical resistance. So ice attack could finally come in handy. However, he's also got ice resistance, so never mind that. So that's two wounds plus he's got poison, so that'd be. Two wounds on my discard. Now, no one has defend. The question is, am I killing any of these dudes in the range or siege attack phase? <sighs> my, my cards could not have come out any worse. Ah, and I used all my tokens getting here, but I don't regret that. But this has been... Not ideal. Four. Two mummies there. That ice attack is... That ice resistance is kind of gross. I should be able to block all these clowns. And probably adding wounds to my hand in the previous phase of combat. Don't think I'm taking out the Vampiric Dragon. Or the Vampire. <laughs> Just, this hand is a joke.
like what a shuffle like what a shuffle dude like not 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 a single one of them not sword of justice not possessed not soul harvester like just crap on a stick here you go make it work so uh we're gonna try to make it work um level seven i think i want to defeat him two times so i would need to overcome the four armor twice and then he'd have five levels left for the final round when I'm going to have all my good cards. Don't think I'm going to be able to do much about him. My range attack... My range plus siege attack caps out at seven. Which isn't great. Range attack at four isn't great. I mean, it's the five armor here, physical resistance there. Killing the skeletal warrior isn't the worst idea. Siege attack block six. Hmm, this is bad. All right, I'm going to play mana draw. I'm going to power it with a white from the source. I'm going to turn this gold into a white. I'm going to get two white mana. Nothing that reduces armor. But I know he's attacking there. The question is, am I defeating any of these guys in the ranger siege attack phase? No. No, I'm not. Block six there. If I can kill him, if I kill the dragon, Seems like a waste of time. But it's seven. I'm going to level up once no matter what. Just not sure killing a dragon is worth it from a wound perspective. Once I have four armor, so the fact that I'm too shy there is gross. If I have four armor, like this math gets a lot better from a wound standpoint. And especially knowing I have two more enemies coming my way for this attack. I block six. Reduce the attacks of two enemies by two. There's literally no one I could defeat in the Ranger Siege attack phase. Oh, this is so bad, dude. All right. Well, that is what it is. So let me see what else is attacking me. Two more monsters. That's a green enemy. So the, there's only two monsters left because, you know, Tesla. So these guys are both attacking. It's the same ones we've seen, the Pain Wraith and the Sagan. The Pain Wraith is... Awful because it has paralyzed, and this guy has brutal, so that'd be 12 points of damage. So that's four armor, it's four damage, and whatever. Now they're just going away after the block and assign damage phase, but that's a lot of damage. I'm gonna need to somehow find a way to soak. And I'm not sure I have a way. Uh. 
Obviously can't get paralyzed, so that's a non-starter. So if I do Force and Nature plus Dodge and Weave, I can block this dude and block, reduce one attack by two. I'll reduce this, this dude's attack by two. So now it's an attack of four, and then I'll use the Utum Guardsman to fully block the Demon Sagan. So again, Dodge and Weave reduce the the Vampiric Dragon's attack by two down to a six, and then I block the rest of it with Force of Nature. Utum Guardsman is I, I, oh Arcane Immunity. Nope, Arcane Immunity does not prevent does not protect the attack; it only protects the enemy. So the attack can be reduced to four, and then we fully block it with the Utum Guardsman. So that's blocked. The Vampiric Dragon is blocked. So we just took care of seven wounds. I'm going to have to use this blue to block this dude because obviously I cannot get paralyzed. These two guys just go away. They were just there for the attack phase and they go away after they are blocked or their damage is assigned. I'm going to use Crystal Joy sideways to block one of these. And... I'm going to, if I don't take any wounds to my hand, I get some stuff, but I don't think, remember, I can only do a healing effect after battle, so assigning a wound to the, the herbalist is not exactly possible. But I can assign this wound from the vampire here. This goes away, because again, it's five armor. I can take these two wounds to my hand and these two wounds to my hand. I'm planning to rest anyway. It is what it is. So I don't get the plus two from dodge and weave, but the all the wounds have been assigned accordingly. And I could have actually kept Crystal Joy and taken another wound to my hand because who cares? Because again, this was I already had one wound to my hand. Remember, it was in my sparing power. So these five wounds, I did not take six wounds, so I did not get knocked out. Now... I need to figure out how many levels I want to get rid of. Do I want to kill the vampire dragon? Will I have enough other damage left? I think so. I mean, this needs to stop. <laughs> I did need to block all those guys, which is gross. All right, the most damage I can get is 16. So I can get four damage from Swift Bolt. I can get, like if I use this, I get a blue crystal and a red mana. I can use a blue crystal on Crystal Joy with Universal Power. Again, that is a action card played sideways with a matching mana. So that's plus four. And then I have this Rage with this red mana, and I have one of these red crystals. So that gives me a total of 16 physical damage. I think what I do is I kill the Vampire, because I did block him. So the Vampiric did not trigger for him, so he's dead. And then I did two levels of the um, the, the Necromancer. And that's going to allow me to get him down to the point where he's only attacking with a four, a six with poison, which I don't really care about. If I only killed him once, he's attacking with a six with paralyze, and that's obviously a far amount worse. And now I'll just draw one card, and I'll have to rest, and then I'll have one more go at this, hopefully with my strongest card still left in my deck, right? So, oh, will I draw a card? I won't draw a card. Because I'll be a 4-6 and I have 6 wounds. Can I heal with the Herbalists? Oh. <laughs> oh, this is so bad.
All right, I can't kill the Vampiric Dragon because I can't take that extra one. So Crystal Joy, we would have done this. We would have used Crystal Joy to reduce the zombie. So that one wound being in my hand is a, is a, was a problem because I would have had to do a slow recovery. So Crystal Joy would have blocked one of the zombies. That would have left me five wounds in my hand. So I will draw one card so I can rest next turn. So, but that does only give me a total of... So I didn't even use... I didn't even use I don't uh, universal power this round, which is a little gross. And I have twelve damage. With the twelve damage, wow. With the twelve damage, and I need thirteen. <laughs> So bad, dude. Unless I just don't care about the Northern Monks. Right? Or the Herbalist anymore. I got the one green mana from there. I have a green crystal. I must have had a green crystal. So let me do this. I would have used this just to get a green mana. That's not a healing effect. It could be done at any time. So now I had a green mana. So I'm not going to get my units back. I could have saved a green crystal. I could have saved crystal joy. Powered it with a blue like I thought I was going to do. Because that's just better for me. And then I could have assigned a wound here. And I could have signed, actually, a wound. Oh, I should have taken poison from that guy, too. So a wound and poison here. And that's fine. They are all were used up and block and attack. Um, and then I could have done what I wanted to do. Kill the dragon, done those two. I think that just puts me in a much stronger position for next round. So we'll review. Um, we had these four enemies, and then these two came in. We'll take them in turn. And so I blocked the Pain Wraith with the Utham Guardsmen. They were totally blocked. I... No, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I blocked them with the Northern Monks. I, whatever. There was blocked four either way. I used Dodge and Weave. I powered it with a white. I got two whites because I used the white from the source. And I used Mana Draw that gave me two white crystals. Right, this will go back and not be rerolled. The two first white crystal I use for dodge and weave. I reduce the attack of the demand the song, whatever. I'm butchering that from a six to a four, and then I use the other unit over here to fully block them. They went away. This went away again. This was the necromancer's attack itself, and now it's done. I assign the damage from the vampiric dragon to the Utum guardsman, so that's where that went. The um, I reduced the other part of Dards and Weave. I used that to reduce the Vampiric Dragon from an eight to a, a six, an eight to a six. I had a green. I used that for block six. That fully blocked the Vampiric Dragon. The zombies and the skeletal horde. The zombies I used. The, the skeletal horde, I assigned that wound to the northern monks. We had to add a second wound because of the poison. And then the zombies came in with uh, three wounds. One I assigned to the herbalist, and then two I took into my hand. I already had another wound. And that means that actually I have even one less wound than that. So I had a wound that I got from Sparing Power. I got two more wounds from the zombies, and I assigned the rest of the wounds to my dudes. In the melee phase, since I took a wound to my hand, I did not get the plus two from Dodge and Weave, but I had a Rage, which I could power with the red, another Rage, which I could power with the red, Crystal Joy with the power with the blue, and Universal Power, so that gives me attack four. And then I had another white from Mana Draw, which gives me attack four, so that's 16 physical attack. I used eight of that to defeat two levels of the Necromancer, and the other eight of that to defeat the, the, uh, the Vampiric Dragon. And now these three guys survive. The, the Necromancer is only attacking with a four, a six with, with poison next round, and I have five more levels of his to defeat. I'm looking there with three wounds on my hand, which again could have been a lot worse. 
This guy's out. That gives me seven fame for killing the vampiric dragon. So 46 to 53 plus one because I did a level up plus three three fame for each level I defeated. So that gives me 54 up to 60. Here's a level up here. Still only six cards in my hand, which is why I really needed to refigure things because if I only had wounds in my hand, that would have been super bad. Cleaning out my play area. I already did my level up prematurely. This white does not get re-rolled as per the terms of mana draw. That is now a black. This comes down. Since I defeated the Vampiric Dragon, I do get one more of these suckers. It is the Amulet of Reawakening. I can play that on my next turn when I'm resting and draw an even additional card on my final turn. The Universal Power goes back. I did have to use both of my skills here. And I'm left with a green, mat a green crystal and a red crystal, which is nice. Do, do, do. This is out. These are all out. I'm going to draw to my hand limit, which is six. I do get booted back to there. I get one Soul Harvester, Sword of Justice, and Determination. That's a hand. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Norawas is going to go one, two, and three. It's red. No more cards coming off. On my turn, I'm going to play the Amulet of Reawakening. We're going to randomly take a card out of here, put it on the bottom of my deck. What is it? I don't know. We'll find out. Bam. And then we're going to use the termination, and we're going to discard this, which is a non-wound card. Any number of wounds, those go all on my discard pile. Because I use the Amulet of Reawakening, I can draw one additional card, so I'm actually going to draw up to seven. Not sure I did that right before. I think I might have forgotten to draw the extra card when I did Amulet of Reawakening before, but someone can go back and check. So Charm, so get Possessed, which is great. Mountain Lore, Swiftness, Improvisation, and then last but not least, Will Focus. That should be enough. I need 20 attack to wipe that dude out. So I think I have what it takes. Nora Watts is going to go. He's declaring end of round next turn. All right. Whew. Um, Thomas says, you play Hop Makas with Torm already? If yes, what do you think about it? I have not. And it's driving me a little nuts, but I just have too many review copies and stuff to get through. I'm hoping to get the Hop Makas sometime in late April if everything else works out. Warlord of Drake, FYI, you may play Black Mana Dice to use the primary effect of the Universal Power with any card. It's very flexible at night. Yeah, for sure. Warlord of Drake, be honest, I'd rather go to the village of the initial hand you had the village until the good cards come. You can go through mountains by mountain lore. So that mountain wouldn't have been a problem to go through. Yeah, I just I just felt like the neck gain. I didn't have a ton of movement in that starting hand, and I was like, whatever. But yeah, it, it kind of, that was like a crap. I mean, that was like worst case scenario, that card draw I had. So I feel pretty good we'll be able to, killing the dragon, I feel like we'll be able to manage the wounds now and just do five more levels and get this thing done the next attack. Thomas Willinger, don't block, just keep the one card. Maybe you don't want to use the card you draw for resting. Uh, maybe. And then Thomas Willinger says, ah, even better. And then Devin Palmer has his head exploded. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize to your family. Alrighty then. Ooh, okay. I feel like we'll be fine. Maybe. Out of white crystals. This, this. I have to do this, I think. We just need attack 20, and I definitely need to do possess. Great. Yeah, we're going to have a bunch of attack. Yeah, we'll get this done. So my turn, uh, I have moved to, I'm going to move in with Mountain Lore, because what else am I doing with it? Uh, no, I'm going to move in with Swiftness, even better. Here we're here, guys, we're here. All right, let me assign some wounds. I'm just going to play Mountain Lore and just cumbersome in my way out of worrying about the zombies. I'm going to play Charm. I'm going to play Will Focus to get a white. I'm going to use that white to power Possess, and then I'm going to use the black from the source. So the vampire is not attacking, and then I can use it for attack 5 in the 
uh, attack phase. So the only thing that is attacking is going to be the mummy. The mummy is going to give me one wound to my hand, one wound to my discard, because it has uh, that thing. That thing that it has. <laughs> Poison. That's right. So now in the attack phase, I'm breaking the Sword of Justice to double all my physical attacks. Uh, during the comp contribution... Double the countries, all physical attacks you play during the attack phase. Oh, by the way, also the Necromancer is attacking with an attack of six with poison, so two more wounds to my hand, two more wounds to my discard pile. Woo, all right. Uh, double the countries, all physical attacks you play during the attack phase this turn. Enemies lose physical resistance this turn. Fame plus one for each enemy you defeat this turn. Fantastic. So I am going to play Improvisation Sideways with that. That is a physical attack of a four because of universal power. I'm getting Soul Harvester, breaking that. That's a physical attack of an eight. And then I have, um, using Possess, this is attacking with a five. That's a physical attack of a ten because, again, everything is doubled. I can group the Necromancer in with these guys, but, um, you know, it seems a little unnecessary. But... Again, and everyone loses physical resistance. Again, anyone who does not have arcane immunity, right? So we're just doing a base attack of a four. So I just need 20. I definitely need to kill the Necromancer. So let me make sure I get the 20 damage for that. And then I'll see if I want to bring somebody else in here. So if I do the uh, Soul Harvester. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, there's no neat way to do this. So I mean, I have three sources of attack right now. 10 because of physical attack because of the vampire. So that's 5 because of physical attack because of the vampire. That's double to 10. 8 because of the soul harvester. That's double to 16. And 4 because of universal power on top of improvisation powered by a red. That's double to 8. So that's, yeah. So we're going to do the 16. Great. Including. Only attack other enemies that attack. Great. So everyone loses physical resistance as well. Great. So I'm going to do the attack of the 10 from the vampire is going to kill, and because he can't attack himself, so he's going to kill both the zombies and the, uh, and the skeleton and the mummy. And then we have the 8 attack from improvisation plus the 16 attack from the Soul Harvester, that's 24 attack, and I'm literally, well, I guess because of uh, Elusive, I'm actually pretty far away. That doesn't count as him being blocked, so the Elusive would still count. So I would, I'm would, i 10 attack away from being able to kill the Vampire as well. So the 24 attack here, though, is enough to do 4 levels of damage, 5 levels of damage to the Dark Crusader Faction Leader, the Necromancer himself. And at the end of this, this guy is like, oh my gosh, where did my friends go? And he leaves. And uh, vampires sound super weird. I keep saying this. No one believes me. Uh, we're going to get six fame from this. I'm going to get two more of these things. Oh, we only have one more. I never used either one of those guys. The, yeah, the bile toxin could have been super helpful last round. But we're going to get uh, six. I don't know if they reshuffle. I don't think they do. But... At this point, who cares? So I get 6 fame from that, plus 3 times 5, so 15 fame from that, so 21 fame. That gets me up to 81. I get plus 1 for each of the two level ups, so I actually end up at 83. We would obviously do a level up. We have no chance to kill the vampire. He just goes away because he just disappears. We end our turn in the Necropolis. I think in Life and Death, you get something, maybe, sort of, no. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, how that all comes together. But in this game, we could play out one more turn if we were trying to chase some score. Obviously, you know by now, I don't really care much about doing that. It just seems like a little bit of a waste of time to me personally. But I will re-roll that die. It's a gold. And I get a gold to end the game because give me a gold. Gold star right here, baby. Did I shut my bike off? No, I didn't. I got really excited. That was real hard. <laughs> Pounding my chest a little bit too too fiercely there. So cool. That was uh that was not as easy as I expected it to be going into that last round, but um you know, just had a piece together that really kind of garbage hand. You know, we end with tranquility back in our deck and a stamina, uh, but used every card on our deck to not only kill two more of the enemies that were there, but we got five more levels off the necromancer, you know. 
we could have done a six if we needed to, right? We have four more attack there. So that that's a nice little win. I'm uh, I'm happy about that. Let me make myself a little bigger here. Um and uh cool. Yeah, we'll do Hidden Valley soon and then kind of do Life and Death. I always thought it was weird that Tesla starts you with Life and Death when that is like the combination of the two factions. I I think they it, I don't know. For me, I like start with the more simple things and kind of get up there. So I don't like how they put that rulebook together. But this was a, a it's a really good one. I do think Life and Death is a lot better than Hidden Valley. So I am with Dursu on that, even though I do think the sealing the graveyard thing is weird. It's just like an unnecessary step uh, for me personally. Did not get the skills I wanted. I think Flight would have made this a lot easier, but. You know, that said, I did use I use these a lot for all the mana and the crystals, and I do think Universal Power is really, really strong. So it's hard to complain about that too much. But uh, this does get mathy. I mean, Tesla. You know, I think with the Elemental faction, it's even worse because you have all the defend powers, and there's a lot to figure out with those to make sure you're doing those proper uh, appropriately. Um, the Vampiric makes it more mathy from the the Dark Crusader faction side of things so you you have to like double and triple check your work and part of this when i kind of walked through that first battle again i was just kind of making sure i did it right with all, all the different things that had to be you know taken care of when you have the dark crusader leader attacking you with two extra enemies well all of a sudden now i have to figure out how six of these attacks be across the four enemies that are there plus the two with the summoning abilities of the Dark Crusader leader, how to you know how do I get through those six attacks without getting knocked out? Hold on one sec. And we're back. So, you know, being able to, you know, it's like, all right, well, I was hoping to bring the Northern Monks back, but you know what? Forget it. Let's just wound all of these guys. Let's just make sure. And it the way it worked out, the fact that Soul Harvester and Short of Justice were the next two cards. And then I could use the termination to rest. That worked out way better, you know, for me. Obviously, if I had at this card one of those two cards, that wouldn't have been great um, by by any means. But I think Dursh is right. The way I played out, like if I just was like, you know what, let me get back here, pillage, 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 get a huge hand, and then I can come in and kind of uh, try to do this all in one swoop. That I think would have been a little bit. Um, a little bit easier, but I, I, I didn't expect that I was going to lose, that I, that I wasn't going to get any of my strong cards. You know, it just, uh, it made things a lot harder for sure. Uh, Madi says, hello, how's it going? I just heard you saying I just need 20 attackers is nothing, so I guess you're in a good spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It worked out, dude. Uh, Warlord, good job, man. Yeah, thanks for the assist. Remembering the, again, reminding me about the pursuit mechanic, being able to save that one crystal because I had, I didn't need to, I, I could have just done, you know, improvisation with another card. You know, I generally wouldn't recommend using these tokens as aggressively as I did. I really could have benefited from having these, but there were just certain things I wanted to get done by the different end of different rounds and you know i probably was a little bit over aggressive in my use of these uh these tokens here for sure um exploring that was probably a mistake too because i just ended up with two more enemies with pursuit so that third round was really just like all right i'm gonna camp down in this village and then just defeat all these enemies one by one by one as i stay in this village and uh hope for the best right so but had such a strong hand. I mean, taking out that graveyard was nothing, and then I was able to come over here and take out those monasteries. Got getting two very strong artifacts, at least from a providing attack, was a uh, super helpful for sure. Uh, Jeff with a thumbs up and a wave. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining. Sad just am I? Am I am here. Is this the end? <laughs> it is. I'll let you decide. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was the end, dude. We uh. With a with a Dursu assist, we were able to pull this one off. But it was a, uh, you know, it looked like it was going to be easy, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, that was the worst shuffle I could have asked for. So uh, it it took us two attacks, wounding every single one of my units, a, a key rest, but we were able to to get it done in the end, and took down our fearless. <laughs> 
took down the necropolis and uh you know got out of the realm of the dead with our our dragony life still intact so warlord says you're welcome i always enjoy assisting beginners <laughs> Jonathan is like 100% agree that Hidden Valley just isn't as good. I should look for a, var a variant. <laughs> Laugh out loud at Drake. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's funny. You guys are funny. You're all so funny. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we'll do like a, a call in where you all can take turns and just, like, you know, be a little five minutes of comedy for each other. Um, <laughs> They'll have someone judge who's the funniest of them all. But, um,. Yeah, it was uh, it was really good, man. It was really good. Yeah, but Hidden Valley, I don't know something about it. Like, the explore mechanic feels weird. You know, there's like triple the explorer that's normal, but then even then ends up not really being a thing because you just get the tokens that let you explore for free. Like, th there's a lot of things they do with it. I kind, I do like. I mean, the centaur is pretty cool. Um, I do like their enemies, right? The defend can get really trippy, but I, I kind of like the math of that. I have the crystal sprites, the centaurs, the, the cloud elemental, the fire elemental, like there's a lot going on with those enemies. And again, having elemental attacks can be really important as you're, you know, of both types though. Right. Cause you know, they, they just, they're across the board. They have so many uh, resistances that makes them a, a pretty interesting challenge, but yeah, it's just not as good for some reason. And, and, um, you know, I just ambush isn't as interesting as pursuit, but I do like it, man. They're definitely among my, you know, they're there's they're somewhere in my top ten for sure. I mean, there's not that many scenarios for solo play, but yeah, there's somewhere, you know, scenarios that I don't begrudgingly play. I do look forward to them as a change of pace. I mean, I guess the only scenario I don't really like right now is Lost Relic has really fallen off for me. I mean, it it does some things. It's interesting. I. I it's, it, I like the fact that you can have a two-round scenario, but I just think there's something about that one and the way it's implemented that just kind of – it just falls for me a little bit. Like the, inter the, the initial draft is interesting, but it's cumbersome, and it's like, hey, it's only two rounds, but wait, I have to spend 15 minutes doing all the setup garbage. So it, it's like, well, if I was going to do all this, why don't I just play a four-round you know, scenario instead? But – Sadja says, well, let's rewind then. And Warlord Drake says, yeah, I'd be up for a fast lost relic take number two. Uh, Jonathan, in the combined scenario, I always feel that the artifacts should be in tombs and spells and magical glades. Yeah, the combined is interesting. I I wish the way they set it up where, like, hey, both leaders are a four, I think is goofy. Um, I wish they had it more like a solar conquest, where it's like a, it scales, hey, recommended level five, eight. Because it, it doesn't seem like it's like a lateral difficulty. You get to that second thing. So, I, but I don't know how I would do it. I think the last time I played that, I was I did a seven and a seven. So I, it was actually at this level because again, you have six rounds to get up to the final one. So maybe I'll try to do it at a seven eleven or eight eight. I mean, eight eight is. But if you do the first eight, you're almost guaranteed to do the second eight, right? Because you have six rounds of leveling up, like you're fairly strong by that point. So I don't know. Someone gives me some, give me some ideas for what I could do with life and death. Because I'll probably do hidden valley and then life and death, or maybe I'll do hidden valley, go to Volcares, return, and then come back for life and death. I don't know. I gotta think. What I just did quest like seven times, right? <laughs> so I guess we're not gonna do quest anytime soon. But um. Yeah, Hidden Valley is cool. The Explorer rules are just are boring compared to the graveyards. This is Jonathan. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Like thematically and uh, and otherwise. But um yeah, the enemy the enemies though I think are are cooler. I do find with life and death, like I always am like I'm going for the elementalist faction leader and then over to Necropolis. I just find that the much easier way to do life and death, because you don't have to worry about the paralyze abilities as much so you're just like great i can get really really strong and then when i'm super pumped up with siege and range attack then i'll go deal with the dark crusader faction i think at some point i might have to force myself to the other way where it's like and especially if you start giving some variance in the levels where it's say i do like 7 11 well do i want a level 7 dark crusader faction even though i have to deal with the paralyzed stuff 
or do I want a, dar a level 11 Darker Seder faction? I'm more beefed up, but now they're going to be a lot harder. What are these levels? These levels go up to 12, right? So, I mean, 12, 12 would be insanity. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mike Sagis says, I could use some care in my life. Thirsty says, of course, I will let you know my thoughts about life and death on higher level. It's going to play my way later. Nice. Mike James, me and my vanilla play of Mains Night seems inadequate after watching all these playthroughs. Nah, man, just enjoy it. Just absolutely enjoy it. Like, this is... <laughs> this game. This game keeps giving, dude. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see come April. <laughs> my my top... My, my top solo list might be... Uh, it might be time. It might be time for some shaking things up, man. I'm... <laughs> It is what it is. There's not a lot of movement at the top of those lists a lot, right? So, we'll see. But, you know, Mage Knight's, uh, Mage Knight's not going away. So, uh, you know, it is not, not that Spirit Island's going away either, for the record. But, yeah, man, I, um, I've been really digging my plays of Mage Knight this last, these last few months, for sure. Uh, Jonathan says, same Mike, the leader's destroying me on six. <laughs> Yeah, they're rough. I mean, again, but it's just a timing thing. It's like, all right, I knew I wanted to defeat the leader twice the first time around just because if I got him to a five, like that six attack with poison was not going to be a thing that was going to be what that was going to hurt me, you know, and just, oh, having mountain lore against the zombies, like what a cheat code. It's like, pff, <laughs> it's so good, man. Like, so good. But uh, possess being able to combo possess with the uh, with with sword of justice was super nice. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, with all with what I defeated three enemies, including the necromancer, so I would end up with three crystals because of soul harvester. So add that to my score. Who's ever doing that? Uh, Sagitt says, and what does it keep giving headaches and manticores? <laughs> Mike's is gonna finally see Spirit Island dethroned, maybe. I don't know. Or I could just totally cheese it and give the unsatisfying. They're both my number ones. Which is kind of what I did last year. <laughs> and the year before that? Definitely last year. I don't know. We'll see. We got a lot of a lot of things to do. I got a lot more games to play too before that. Maybe we'll have a surprise entry in the number one conversation. Probably not. I don't think we're going to have a surprise entry in the number one through five conversation. I think my top five are pretty on lockdown for the near future, but you know, we'll see. Definitely top 10 conversation gets really interesting though. Six through 10 have been, there's been a lot, there's a lot of games buying for the six through 10. So, you know, including all the ones from last year, but Mike James, I like guy project more personally, but maze night is a game. I can easily see people ranking at the top of their list. It is in my top 10 ish for sure. Yeah, guy project at one makes a lot of sense, man. I, oh, yeah. Gaia, Gaia really hits it, hits a spot for me that most games of that ilk don't like those like really crunchy, like Euro E things. Um, with the tech track, with the fact that you have an Atoma, like the, the lot of games with Atomas don't hit my top, you know, the top of my list anymore. Um, and when I say Atoma, I mean like the more traditional Atoma that scores points. I mean, I'm talking like, you know, Wingspan and Viticulture, like all the Atoma factory stuff, right? But what they do with Gaia, like there's something about the whole system that is like so amazing. It's so good. Like going to play more Maze Knight, but Jaws of the Lion has on my table for a few days. Oh, yeah. When I, when I played through that, I played through that campaign four times, but the two times I did it solo, it just, yeah, you just, you got to just barrel through. It's so good. Where the Drake says, Keith, I'm at number one. Spirit Island is good and epic as Maze Knight in different ways. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it keeps, you know, one of the things I, and I've said, and it's like, it's, it's weird that this is like how my brain works, but like the fact that I'm like, there's, they keep adding more content and I'm just like, stop. <laughs> like Maze Knight to me is just great. One of the things that makes it amazing is like it's it this is Maze Knight, right? We're not getting new stuff for Maze Knight. And it just continues to deliver without needing extra content, right? You could do the fan made stuff and what Dursu and Thomas have done with different scenarios is amazing. And I know people really like the betrayal campaign that we talked about earlier. That's awesome. But the fact of the matter is like 
I still play this game and find combos I never saw before. And it's not because I haven't seen the card a hundred times. It's because the game is that rich, you know, going in. It's it's really nuts. But uh, Sad says, nah, Spirit Island can go back to the shelf. <laughs> Well, it's going to come off the shelf next week for sure. Speaking of next week. Um, yeah, so I was going to try to do five days this week. That just ended up being not the wisest thing I could have tried to do. Uh, one of my kiddos is actually here right now, so I'm going to go hang out with him. But, uh, yeah, we uh, are going to take tomorrow off. But Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have two new games, both review copies. Wingspan is going to hit the channel. Definitely not my normal fare, but uh, super appreciative that Stonemeyer sent me that. So uh, glad to feature that. It's a game I've played competitively a few times. Wasn't sure I would like the solo mode. But, again, Atoma Factory, once again, has really impressed me with that. So if that's your jam at all, uh, I would definitely uh, definitely check that out. And then we're going to have Gloom of Killforth. It uh, took me a lot longer to get my head wrapped around than I th around that than I thought it would, but glad finally things are starting to click with me in that game and, and really do like what that brings to the table. That was a review copy from Hall or Nothing Productions. And then we're going to finally get the Chapter 4 of the Aurora from Cloudspire. So that's going to round out this week. Next week, you can expect Spirit Island, probably Lost Expeditions with the some of the expansion stuff. Uh, I got... Maybe Champions of Horror. I'm going to get Nemo's War back on the channel. So lots of uh, really cool things going on. So again, if you want to see like just certain titles you could expect to see in upcoming weeks, go on my Patreon page. Link in the description below. There you'll find a March's public post. I put a public post at the beginning of every month or near the end of every month for the next month where I kind of go through different titles that you'll expect to see. Some other things I want to get on the channel this month, Dwellings of Eldervale should be on the channel by the end of this month. I'm reading the rulebook for Renegade. Super excited about that. Shout out to Philip, my Patreon, who uh, Patreon who kind of worked that out for me that we were able to get a copy of that into my house uh, together. <laughs> it's a long story. We'll bother you with that but it was super awesome uh so excited about that and we should see nemesis on the channel this month as well which uh really stoked about that that game uh finally got that to the table a couple weeks ago with some friends played two games of it and absolutely loved that experience for sure um we have da, da, da. wow lots of lots of comments here uh, Warlord Drake, uh huh, right? The expansion stuff, I agree with that. Mike James, Sajid, S. Sirenon is incredible. I have so much variety in different scenarios, so good. Snorble says, Bro, Maze Knight is a complete game. Mike Owens, the Spirit Island is one of the games on my to buy list. I'm torn between that and Too Many Bones for my next game. <sighs> yeah, that's that's a really hard decision. I mean, my I mean, I'm Spirit Island a hundred times before I say Too Many Bones, but it just depends so much on the person. Too many, I mean, from a bang for your buck perspective, I, oh, dude, I would just say Spirit Island, like, on so many levels. Like, Too Many Bones is great when it's great. It's just, it's not always great <laughs> in a way that Spirit Island delivers more consistently from a game to game perspective. Like, you know what you're, you can expect, even with, 24 different spirits, 29 different spirits, and eight different adversaries. You know, there's a more consistency from of of in-game experience, game to game. Whereas too many bones, it leans into the zany. It leans into the fact that it's not always balanced, and that's part of the experience. And that can be very jarring for me even now. Dozens and dozens and dozens of games into too many bones. Um, yeah. I, it's hard not to say both because they're so different. But I, for me, like if I'm saying, "Hey, you're only getting one," like Spirit Island is is awesome, dude. Like, and it's gonna deliver you that crunchy, crunchy experience. But if you like the zany and you don't mind imbalance and you are super intrigued by too many bones, I mean, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, but it, it's it can be a much more jarring game to learn because like some of the stuff is bananas. You also are going to need to be prepared. Like I like the fact that they have the solo encounters and too many bones. The game does shine more at two gear locks though. Uh, whereas I think Spirit Island is more flexible. That Spirit Island can be awesome true solo. It can be awesome with multiple spirits. And then it just comes out to personal preference. Where too many bones, though, I think at some point, once you know the game and you've learned the gear locks, you're gonna want to be playing with two gear locks. So that's something else to know, like going in. 
the the games with too many spoons are also like twice as long. So, you know, there's that whole part of it from a time perspective. I think Spirit Island delivers a lot more, a lot consistently. But uh, yeah, man, it's uh, <laughs> that, that's a tough choice for sure. Um, agrees as Jonathan really hopes Spirit Island stops at some point. It is so good, but bloat is a real killer for me. Actually playing games, Mike James, thanks Greg. Enjoy the time with the kid. Thank you, sir. Snorble. By the way, do you remember I asked about a quick deck builder? Check out Sky Tier Horde. Um, I think I just got notification that they're sending that to me as a review copy because I did was it it was if it was you Snorble, thanks, man. Because I did reach out to them, I checked it out, and I was like, hey, it might have been Mike actually. I don't know, it was one of you two, uh, that I, I actually emailed them and, and uh, asked for a review copy and they got back to me immediately and, and have it on my way, on their on its way to me. Uh, so I should get that this weekend. So yeah, excited to check that out. I'm not a huge deck builder guy. Um, but if it has quick gameplay, I mean, it, it, it checks a lot of boxes that I like. So we'll, we'll see how I feel about this one. Jonathan says, thanks for it. Bye everyone. Later, sir. Sad just says lost expedition would be neat. Yeah. I put it on a channel once with the base game, the expansions. And I was, I think my approach on the base game was super, super wrong. So, uh, I'll talk about that and then we'll add the expansion. So excited about that. My Gowans, I saw something about sky tier horde on some board game group and it piqued my interest. Yeah. That should be on the channel. I got like four or five review copies still to go, not counting expansion stuff. So it's going to be a little bit, but we'll get that on this channel pretty soon. Sagis says, now rewinding back to the beginning. Take care, y'all. Later, sir. Mike James. Snorble says, Maximum Apocalypse is great as well for many of the same reasons as Sky Tier Horde. Uh, that is also on my radar. Again, Rock Manor Games, uh, they created both Set of Watch and Set of Watch Swords of the Coin, and they just crowdfunded set of watch up what is it something <laughs> just i was just texting my friend about it uh what was it set of watch set of watch and yeah forsaken isles is like the most recent kickstarter then there's a big box campaign thing um and then rock matter also has maximum apocalypse they have a pirate game coming out pretty soon that looks pretty wild that they actually I think it literally has like you know if everyone's played everdell with the berries like imagine that but bigger and make them cannonballs <laughs> it's freaking awesome <laughs> so that game's coming out so yeah i do hope that they're going to send me a review copy of the new maximum apocalypse it's uh, got like a lot of weather features and stuff, and it looks pretty damn cool. So uh, that is another game that you could expect on the channel, hopefully in the next few months. But um, Mike James' Max Apocalypse blew me away, honestly. Caught me off guard. Yeah, I, did you get the latest one? Did the weather one just come out and deliver, or was that like crowdfunding? Because I know there was like, I think they're on their third edition of Maximum Apocalypse, or maybe this is the second. I don't know. It It, it, it looks really cool. And uh, the art looks pretty awesome. Again, I'm not a used deck builder guy. I did, I bounced off Aeon's End, sold my, I had all wave one and wave two and sold that. Street Masters never hit for me, ever. Um, like, it, I wanted it to so bad. It was recommended by a patron. And, like, I love the theme. And I'm like, dude, I'm a, ch I'm a kid of the 80s. I grew up with, like, those freaking movies, those Van Damme movies and that game should have been a home run for me and it just wasn't oh just some really really broken about it so um if i can find a good deck builder for a solo game i would i would really love that i mean sentinels of the multiverse was a big miss for me I think, uh, not a big miss for me. i liked it enough and i was like i had no interest in getting the new stuff i just had the enhanced edition and sold that off pretty quick too so you know deck builders do not have a long do not exist in my basement for very long <laughs> that's for sure um my chains, I have it on the way. I have the first boxes. Oh, very cool. And Mike Owens, too many games to buy. Not nearly enough money to do it all with, or the time to play it. Ugh, or the shelf space to store it. <laughs> uh, Mike James says the decks are pre-built. Uh, that is for, oh, Maximum Apocalypse. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Mike Owens, I love deck builders. Marvel Champions is really my foray into board gaming. Nice. Yeah, well, on, I mean... So when I'm talking deck builders, I'm talking more because like I guess Maze Knight's like a quasi deck builder, although I really struggle to put it in that category. Um like I'll play Dominion and Clank and whatever. Dune Imperium doesn't really work for me, but I'll play it. Like there's there are games, you know, when I'm thinking deck builders, I'm thinking um you know, like Arkham Horror L C G, it's a different kind of deck builder, right? I mean Arkham Horror was my number one game for a long time and like 
I still love that game. I play it co-op. I did sell off the second half of my collection because I just I like the early cycle so much more for a lot of reasons. So, you know, for me, it was like, you know what? I played through these campaigns enough. I'm just kind of done with them. Let me go. I'm going to keep the earlier campaigns because those are ones I have more nostalgia for them. I like them more. I have more. I just I like those investigators more. So for me, like those games are awesome. I played Marvel Champions, and I think being such an Arkham player, Marvel Champions really just didn't work for me in the same way. And I just don't really have like superhero themes are never going to be a strong fit for me. So like it was like eh, that's fine, but it felt a little bit too much like Sentinels for me, and I already didn't like Sentinels. So I I don't know if I gave it a fully fair shake, right? Um, to me, if I'm going to take one of those LCGs and I'm talking Lord of the Rings, Marvel champions or Arkham, like Arkham's going to win every day for me, for sure. Um, but again, I'm still talking about the early cycles. I'm talking about return. To, well, Night of the Zell is not great, but it's, that's where you start. But after, I mean, Dunwich, Carcosa, Forgotten Age are just three awesome, awesome experiences. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the scenarios. Um, and I just think they're very, very well designed uh, for the most part. So, uh, Sky Tier and Max Apocalypse aren't ands and deck building. Nice, cool. That uh, that's good to know. That's definitely good to know. Mike Owen says it makes sense. The theme is absolutely one of the biggest draws to me as someone who grew up reading Marvel comics and still does to this day. No, that's awesome. Yeah, man, I definitely have friends who are Marvel who are superhero guys, and they friggin' they love champions and never invest in Arkham, and that's great. That's great, and uh, yeah, I guess Lord of the—I mean, Lord of the Rings is interesting. You know, I, again, that's probably another one I didn't give a fully fair shake for because I think you really need to invest a lot more than I would ever want to, time-wise or financially. But it just felt dated and felt not nearly as interesting or engaging as Arkham. So you know, I, I was glad to get it on the channel. Maybe one day I'll get Marvel Champions on the channel. But I, I just think Arkham, you know, I played so much Arkham for such a long time that it's going to be hard for another LCG to come in and be like, oh, this is great. So, yeah, so like, I guess that's another kind of deck building, but that, that's totally different. But, yeah, I'm talking more deck building like Dominion Clank where you start with 10 cards and all, you end the game with 30 and your whole deck is turned over, right? Um, it's a, just a very different kind of thing. Well, Mike James, we will keep you here all day. Love that. Off to the kid. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, Mike, Jan Mike Owens literally have put something close to 300 hours of champions on TTS with my friends. Oh, that's dude, you, that's the key part too, man. It's like games that you like. You have that friend group that you can play with. That's awesome, dude. That's and that's such a big part of Arkham for me. I mean, I have logged so many games of Arkham with friends. I don't log solo games. I don't know. I don't want to know that number. No one needs to know that number. That number should never be out <laughs> in existence anywhere. But uh, as far as like logged games with friends, I mean, Arkham Horror is. I'm in the hundreds, uh, far above any other game I played uh, with my friends for sure. So, uh, Mike Owen says, "Yes, stop be talking to us, Greg." Gosh, <laughs> no, this is cool. This was, uh, yeah, it was only four rounds. This is great. Yeah, I'm not even at the three hour mark yet, right? <laughs> cool. Well, look, uh, everyone. I hope you have an amazing Monday night late, early, whatever time zone you're in and enjoy your Tuesday. I will be back here on Wednesday. Hopefully you can join me then. Any questions, comments, epiphanies, put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, happy gaming. Sorry.